Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome. Welcome to Law Explaining the Interwebs. I am your host, Nick Ricada of Ricada Law, a small law firm in central Minnesota. And with me today will uh, hopefully be Mr. Mark Kern. I, uh, I just saw you guys in the chat saying that he was going through a thread on Twitter. And I went and took a peek and it is directly, directly related to this topic. And so... I um am going to uh, where I decided to start the show. I sent a message to Mark and said, "Hey man, uh, whenever you're done with your thread, go ahead and pop in." So I'm gonna have the headphones on, wait for him to call in, and uh, and everything. But until until he does, we'll just go ahead and sally forth, I suppose. Um, oh, hold on, I gotta get that. I'm gonna have to get that thing pulled up. Uh, uh, come on. so that i have it uh he is he is very much um <laughs> he is going to town on this blizzard stuff and uh and that's what we're planning on talking about tonight so this will be good uh reading material to go with it so i do have it pulled up here uh on my very suspended twitter account thank you twitter you guys are making my life so much easier without all of the uh, without all of the Twitter nonsense. I mean, who who wants to be, you know, on Twitter anyway, right? <laughs> I don't know why it isn't Sally Fifth. Uh, I don't know why it isn't Sally Fifth at all. But uh, so tonight, you know, um, we're going to talk about Blizzard and China. We're going to talk about their. Uh, they've had a roller coaster of a week, we could say. They, uh, if you're not familiar, there was a Hearthstone tournament. Hearthstone is like um, a card game that you play on a computer and you don't have cards. But uh, what uh, happened is the winner, I believe, of the Hearthstone tournament, and we'll we can source this from some news articles to get the clarifying facts. But the winner of the Hearthstone tournament is a uh, guy and and as they were interviewing him post victory uh he was he made a statement about hong kong and apparently blizzard is opposed very opposed to the idea of people making any sort of political statements in their gaming events at least in regards to hong kong I don't know. Like, I don't know if other players have made political statements at a Blizzard gaming event. I don't know if that has happened. I have a hard time believing it's never happened. Hmm. But that uh, that is that is the claim that, uh, you know, Blizzard is opposed to having this political statement happening during their gaming event. Uh, what what many have speculated is that it has more to do with the emerging Chinese market, uh, the imminent launch of Diablo Immortals, which will have a large Chinese footprint and a massive amount of money, um, potential uh, revenue on on the table for Blizzard, and that maybe maybe there was some Chinese pressure put on Blizzard to uh, do something to make an example of this guy. Um, and, uh, we will, we will have to go through that before that, before we jump into it, um, let's talk about, uh, this coming week, this coming week. Um, there's some stuff developing behind the scenes. Uh, I, I hate like saying that, but I'm working on some things in the background. Some of the changes will be visible like uh the some of the borders and stuff on the show are going to get changed up but that's that's all secondary uh the stuff that the other stuff that's going on in the background is I'm working on those short videos that I mentioned um and I've got a couple different ones I've got a new one today that actually delayed the creation of the other one um I think it was supposed to come out the the other one was supposed to come out yesterday but things got really busy with my uh personal life and I wasn't able to put together a recording and I was going to do that today. And then today I got uh, something that has to go out first. And so that's going to come out tomorrow. There will not be a live stream tomorrow. 
Uh, there normally wouldn't be a live stream on Saturday, but uh, obviously um, I wanted to have Mark on as a guest, and this is a day that he was available. Um, so, and I want to talk about the Blizzard thing while it's fresh. So that being said, watch for a video tomorrow. It should be short, 5 to 15 minutes tops. And I think many of you want to see this and will want to share it. I think. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, without, a, without a Twitter, I need y'all's help a little bit in sharing um, the videos. Uh, this one especially. You know, this isn't a giant live stream where everybody's going to be like, hey, what's this three-hour garbage you sent me? Or anything like that. This will be very focused, very to the point, and... Um, it's something that people do want to probably see. So uh, that being said, that video will come out tomorrow, um, come hell or high water. And then uh, I do have, I still have the video going after the uh, the fake article that was written about me, the truth out article, um, written about me in the, I shouldn't say it was about me. I guess it's about the Vic situation although a large portion of the article is dedicated to me so i wanted to deal with those parts of the article that's um and and really talk about where they got it wrong which is basically everywhere and then um there is a a further video coming out on how to be an anime mafia don i'm not sure on the creation of that one what the timeline is going to be like because that video is a different type than what I normally do. Oh, sorry. Uh, it's different than what I normally do, and the production will likely be a little bit, uh, hopefully a little bit better than just uh, you know me yelling at a camera. Um, there will be some, some other stuff to kind of make it uh, more imminently shareable. But uh, So I, I don't know how long that one's going to take. It'll involve some moving parts and some help from... From some other people so uh, but just that's kind of stuff to watch uh coming for coming from this week we will be doing live streams uh this week as well the topics on those are still to be announced i'm working on this coming saturday having another big brain panel i just got to get final confirmation from the big brain panel on if they will all be able to make it Um, so that, that said, that's, uh, that's coming up. I know many, many people were waiting for that, uh, the big brain panel. And, uh, I've, I've gotten quite a few requests for another one. It's been a very long time and I love talking to those guys. So that should be fun. Um, I hope, uh, some of you caught the stream last night with Kendra Paris. I thought we had a really great conversation, very informative about red flag laws. Uh, she ended up being, uh, even funnier than I thought she would be. So that was great. And um, that was a lot of fun as well. But I guess uh, what we can start with is here. Got to get, uh, I got to get my windows in order. So give me a second. Mm -mm. Mm. We've got a couple different news stories that, that uh, illustrate what has happened here, but I've got to get them in the right window. Oh, and my um, my artist is working on a shirt right now, hoping that it gets uh, that it's up before the show ends, because <laughs> I think it's I think it's great. I think it's great. I think you guys will like it. And the other thing, so uh, when I mentioned that I think you guys will like a shirt or something, uh, what I hope you understand is um, I'm less concerned with people buying the shirts. I mean, I love it when you guys do, obviously. If it's something you like, please buy it, uh, you know, so that you have one. But I'm not trying to sell you a shirt so much as just give you a joke. <laughs> that's that's the main goal of the of the uh, the Teespring store, and what I love about that is the the flexibility that I have because um, it it doesn't cost. I don't have to like buy inventory for these shirts or anything like that. They're print on demand and everything, so uh, I can make the shirt. You can laugh at it, 
And if you don't buy one, um, it's it doesn't really harm me or anything like that. I didn't I didn't have to invest much other than compensating my artist for the work. So uh uh West Nile, Best Nile is still a pending issue. But um uh but yeah. No, if uh if Mark Kern's a no show uh Brockzilla, make no mistake, I will definitely be threatening to murder millions of people, then I will delete my YouTube channel. I will also buy a compound bow and uh with with serrated blade arrows and all of that stuff. Um <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay. Uh let's let's see here. All right. Uh there was a super chat I want to get to right away. This is from Lee Ditworth. Lee Ditsworth, not Ditworth. Ditsworth says today is my 51st birthday. I've officially entered my 6th decade. Have a shot of Tito's ready. Can I get you to do a shot with me? Um yes. Yes, you can. And since you are since you are on vodka, I will match you. I will match your vodka with with some crystal skull vodka. How's that? I don't know how much a shot is, so I'm going to really botch this up, I'm sure. Like, I just free pour liquor. So I never know how much I'm drinking. I actually have, like, a, a whole Crystal Skull shot glass set and everything, but I didn't... Yeah, I know it's... <sighs> I know the 30 milliliter, but this isn't a standard size, so who knows? But uh, Lee, happy birthday, buddy, uh, to 51 more at least, or whatever. Shots of vodka, man. That was more than a shot, I think. Ugh. Uh. Oh, so cheers to you, my friend. That was somewhat delicious. Uh, looks like we'll have Mark. Uh, Mark joining in in just a second. I'm going to invite him to. The Let's see. I'm inviting him in right now. So hopefully he'll be on in just a second. All right. So I guess that Crystal Skull Vodka will help uh, help wake up there. <laughs> mm. Cheers to you, man. Cheers to you. Uh, but anyway, let's, um, <laughs> I'll do one other. <laughs> okay <laughs> sorry for the for the background stuff here trying to get uh trying to get mark connected 
Hmm. Oh, hey, looks like uh, I think I've got you. Hey, buddy, welcome to it. Oh, let me get you unmuted. You can't hear me? Uh, yes. I can hear you if you can see me. Uh, hear you. Okay, we can hear you. Oh, well, that doesn't help. I can Let me hear... see. There you go. There's okay, a good. You can hear me. Yeah. Uh, speakers. Let's go to... <laughs> uh, Mark can't hear me yet, so I'm going to call him all sorts of names uh, while he gets that set up. Um, but we can hear him, so... Just, uh... uh one second what are you doing in here stop stop right there what All right, how about if I just do this? The audio quality is not going to be as good this way, but can you hear me? I, yeah, we can hear you just fine. Can you hear me? Okay, I still can't hear you. Hmm. Let me try this again. This is your food. It's your food. It's your food. Thank you. Good night, lady. This is uh this is top shelf entertainment. <laughs> uh this always happens, huh? Okay. Well, it's defaulting to the right speakers. How about uh I'll click the invite again. Let me let me get out of here. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> welcome back. Hey, I can hear you now. Hey, perfect. Hey man, welcome to the show. Let me Thank uh, you very much. I'll get your avatar pulled up on screen. I, that way people know that, that you have an avatar that's a face. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How's it that going, works. man? Uh, it's going great, except for this blizzard stuff. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, so I was, I was waiting, um, for the show and people were like, uh, Mark's like dropping fire on Twitter right now. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I gave myself about an, uh, about 45 minutes to write it, but it took a little longer than that. As it sometimes does. Well, no worries, man. We've got, uh, I've got the thread pulled up. Um, I was really actually kind of hope. Yeah, I was hoping to go through that statement with you. Um, when I saw it drop, I was, I was, uh, I read it and I was like, oh, okay. Uh, so well, we can go through it now. I, yeah. and, uh, what, uh, what link should I, I tweet out here for people who just read this and want to want us to hear, uh, want us to hear us go through it verbally. Oh, here, uh, I'll send you, I'll, I'll link you the show on discord and then that way. Is is that a good place, or do you want me to yeah, just throw it on the screen? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Well, so it's on. Uh, you just send him that link on Discord, and um, and tweet that out, and we can talk about we can talk about the the statement. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up that statement itself. Yep. Uh, Blizzard. So I've got a bunch of <laughs> I've got everybody's um state or everybody's links about the statement but not the here here's the actual statement there we go Like it's hard to find Blizzard's actual statement it's been out SEO'd by <laughs> everybody else on the planet <laughs> uh, I don't I don't think they would have gone out of their way to optimize that. <laughs> no. No, something tells no, me you're correct on that one. No meta tags, nothing fancy. They 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 slunk it, they slunk that through past working hours on a Friday. Yeah. <laughs> what do you say? They're not hoping that this news cycles and that uh maybe maybe that leak of of Diablo Immortals going live 
on October 26th might might start to get traction. I mean, that's coincidence, I'm sure. <laughs> Uh-huh. Uh huh. Well, like I stated in the thread, it's like uh, we we call it the one-two punch, right? Where basically we we drop the bad news on Friday, and then this, and then we pick an appropriate time uh, the following week to drop something juicy to advance the news cycle. Right. And uh, if they're stupid, in my opinion, they're going to pick Diablo Immortals. If they're smart for the U.S. market. They'll pick Diablo 4 or Overwatch 2, in my opinion. Exactly. Diablo Immortals would be a huge misstep because that are, they already know that, that that didn't go over well. That went over like a lead balloon, right? Right. So if they're going to say anything positive next week, it's going to be some exciting teaser about BlizzCon, you know, you don't want to miss this BlizzCon. Here is a little three-second clip of what you might miss if you don't buy a ticket. <laughs> and it'll be like some logo or something. Yeah, People will oh, freak out. You know how they could really... This, uh, this would unironically be the best move they could make. If they have a 24-hour development team releasing a Winnie the Pooh skin character for Overwatch, <laughs> like coming coming next week... Right. Like they they just dropped a billion dollars to buy the Winnie the Pooh IP. <laughs> just, <laughs> you could run around as Winnie the Pooh throwing globs of honey on people and slowing them and then bludgeoning them to death with a jar. That would be perfect. Perfect. Well, perfect. You character. know, uh, I, I someone posted that they wanted to see. Uh, hundreds of fans in Winnie the Pooh costumes dashing at the convention center in a Naruto run like the Area 51 race. <laughs> Do it. Get Where's the yeah. Facebook event? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so you asked me an interesting question when we were setting up the show. You said, what, uh, what, like, what liquor are we drinking? And, oh, yeah. Um, I didn't respond because I was trying to figure out what Kami liquor I could buy locally, and I couldn't find any official Chinese liquor. I was going to try and get some, some Baiju, uh, I think is how you pronounce it, but they don't have any yep. in the middle of Minnesota. Mm -hmm. So I got the next best thing. I got vodka brewed in Minneapolis. Um, I, I figured, <laughs> uh -oh. and it's, listen, this is distilled from sugar beets. I, I think made, you just buy, uh, what, yeah. it, was it? Tell it's, me. It's from, it's distilled from sugar beets and made for sharing. I was like, this is, that's pretty communist. Uh, so I know some, some, basically some commie Minnesotan hipsters have made this sugar beet saying, vodka. Are you saying it tastes terrible? I haven't tried it yet. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, this is a fresh bottle. So I was waiting for you to, to well, share I don't that. have that, but, but let me go get something while you open that. And maybe, uh, you know, uh, there's probably people jumping in right now who have no idea what we're talking about. Uh, give them a lead in to vamp for me while I go get alcohol. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. Right back. Yeah, man. Okay, so I'm uh, I'm being defeated by a communist string right now. There we go. Uh, this is uh, what this is what I was just speaking about. This is beet vodka. Notice they can't say beet, so they use a long e uh, to indicate that it's beet. Come on now. Uh, this is handcrafted vodka, uh, rooted in the pioneering spirit of American sugar beet connoisseur. Who cares? Uh, distilled in its to its essence and revealed in a beautiful sipping experience made for sharing. This is literally as communist as I could find out here. Um, but uh, so what we're talking about, what Mark and I are talking about, is um, what I was mentioning earlier. There's a Hearthstone player who uh, made a statement about Hong Kong. Uh, during the during a post tournament interview, um, the interview was conducted uh, on a Blizzard channel by I believe Blizzard employed uh, esports casters, and in that conversation, he expressed his support for Hong Kong, and then Blizzard summarily banned him and told him all of his winnings were forfeit. So that was the appropriate corporate response. Uh, to what what was otherwise a rather non-eventful um, statement, <laughs> if you ask me. Uh, what well, what's your, so what's your opinion on that? Just the statement in general, uh, Mark. Because to me, like okay, so your your tournament winner says free Hong Kong, and you go, okay, we don't really endorse the the views of any tournament winners, um, and we we would wish they would 
stick to uh, the gaming in these interviews or something like that. But uh, they they went full on nuts on him. They did. They they went. They they pulled the uh, the maximum penalty they could, uh, you know, um, and uh, they and they could have easily just cut the stream, right? Uh, right. Or 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 it should have been on a loop. These things are all in loops, right? They 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 should have just cut away and then never mention it or just come back and release a simple statement it's like hey this was getting off the rails into the realm of politics we don't play in politics we're gamers we're, we're game makers let's stick to games done done yeah uh absolutely simple response instead um lifetime ban was the original thing right yeah uh, lifetime ban and and he had won something like 10 grand i think in the tournament and they said no no money for you so that was nice. But uh, then today, shockingly, after stock prices uh, took a hit, uh, they decided to to walk that back a bit, uh, from what I understand. <laughs> it's hard to say if it was a real stock hit or just uh, part of the random walk. You know, it was like a, what, a percentage point or so? Percentage um, or two? Something like that. I've got an article pulled up from uh, CNN Business or somebody. Hold on. Uh cbs news yeah stock price yeah, dips as video game game players call for boycotts four percent this week four percent stock drop oh uh, so well, that's you uh, know it, it, it's really hard to correlate i mean everybody loves to whip out stock stock charts whenever some bad news hits that that shows that they're you know that that shareholders are just as upset as they are. But I, and I, I've, I've rarely seen that uh, last more than say a week. And it's hard to say if that is a random variation or, uh, or if that was an actual reaction by investors. Right. It, Cause you can never tell. I mean, there can be other market factors involved, obviously. Um, but uh, what I found to be interesting was uh, even on, even on my show in the, in the chat, when, when we, when I had first talked about it very briefly, I knew nothing about the situation. It had kind of just happened, um, and and I gave a very high level overview. Um, I did get a lot of people saying, "Hey, they're a private company. They have a right to keep. Uh, they have a right to keep their their broadcast focused in a particular way." And this guy broke that, and and there was some defense of it. But very very quickly after that. Um, I don't know about those specific people's defense of it, but the overwhelming, uh, at least social media call on this was Blizzard did bad, right? I didn't see too many people sticking up for Blizzard, um, <laughs> out there on the, on Twitter or out there in the social media space. It, it seems <laughs> to really have caught on. Uh, uh, yeah, just a real quick, someone just tweeted at me that I'm echoing badly and I just wanted to see if that was the case. Um, I don't know if see chat. I've heard an echo come through. Uh, I think it's, are you, are you on headphones? I am on headphones. Yeah. Okay. I'm not, so. I'm not seeing it right now. I saw something or I heard something earlier, but, uh, I haven't seen it in a little bit. So. Okay, so what can do? But but yeah, to your point, it's like uh, you, you haven't seen anyone <laughs> that wasn't upset at this, and th that's because this has reached uh, politics of all stripes. You know, everyone's con in the, here in the U.S. and, and in Europe, um, everyone's upset by this. The only people who I who I've seen who aren't upset about it are some like really diehard authoritarian China supporters, right? <laughs> so, but yeah. it's like it's not but but even even communists are upset by this and socialists are upset by this it's only a very very small hard line that's that's defending china here so um can i can i do something with you can i do a share screen uh i have i have create well my artist has created a shirt uh that people might be interested in and it's themed um i don't know you don't have to endorse this if you don't want to but but uh this is the the shirt why wouldn't i endorse that, that i don't know i just like, never want to the message out i never want to i never want to put you know words in anybody else's mouth but uh it's free hong kong <laughs> and the logo is a little bit of uh it's uh reminiscent of a certain other logo well, the, the font is very familiar looking <laughs> So if people are looking for a for a shirt to show their support, 
um, they can they can check that out. Uh, it's on it's on my Teespring page, and um, uh, I think one of so, my mods will spam the link there. But <laughs> so let me let let me give our listeners a little background. Like, oh, what? Well, why should Mark Kern weigh in on this? Right? Sometimes yes. I get this question. Why should Mark Kern weigh on this? Uh, yeah, he was team lead for original uh, Vanilla WoW, and he he helped convince Blizzard by bringing the petition to the CEO to make them launch WoW Classic. Uh, but but what does this have to do with Hong Kong? Why is Mark upset about Hong Kong? Uh, dude, I grew up in Asia. I'm Chinese, right? I, I, I was born in Taiwan, and uh, I spent a year in Hong Kong. I remember the handover. Uh, from the British government to uh, communist China. And not only that, uh, I have direct connections with Tibet. So when I was uh, in high school, uh, my grandmother was bringing over Tibetan monks to start the first temple in Taiwan. And they, wow. so I, I lived with Tibetan monks this whole time, and they're incredibly sharp. And, uh, you know, and, and, and so, you know, my grandmother had very close ties there. She gave me a medallion that was blessed by the Dalai Lama himself that's supposed to protect me and everything else that I've kept to this day, you know, decades later. And um, and then I've done tons of business in China for decades uh, with any number of companies. And I've seen shit you wouldn't believe, right? <laughs> so, right. Uh, so, you know, this is this and, and I love Hong Kong. So this is very much. Uh, everything to me. And it's it, to such a degree that I've come out so strongly publicly about this, I will guarantee you uh, I can never go to China again. And every Chinese company that I have contacts there is going to ghost me immediately. Right. I can, I, and then I can never get a license to operate games in China now because I've taken a stance on free Hong Kong, because I've taken a stance on free Tibet, and because I've called out Blizzard in this mess. Uh, this is a very real cost to, to me in my business. So for those, you know, some people have said, well, why, why is Mark interjecting himself? It's like, I'm not interjecting myself. This is a personal matter for me, so much so that I have literally given up millions of dollars to make this point. And I just want to point that out to, to listeners now. That this is, comes at supreme cost to me. I can never go back to China. If I do, my safety will be at risk. This is... This is no bullshit right here. This is real. You know, I uh, I didn't know that your backstory, your origin story was that in depth. Um, <laughs> I I really didn't. I, I just know that you have been uh, your uh, you have deep ties to Blizzard. You have been openly critical of Blizzard's actions when their business decisions or when their business decisions are weird. And you've been openly supportive of business decisions for them that make sense. For example, uh, you were, you were uh, very important in WoW Classic, uh, getting off the ground, um, overcoming a lot of the naysayers and WoW Classic uh, appears to be a, largely a, a pretty big success for Blizzard. And, a huge success. Right. It's and revitalize the whole franchise. And so, um, you know, I that that's the main reason uh, that I wanted to reach out. Also, because I know that you're you're a guy who speaks his mind, uh, just in general, and I appreciate that about you. So, but to to find out that you had um, more extensive ties, specifically to China, specifically to the questions of of uh, we'll call it Chinese colonialism, um, I guess is is one word for it. But uh, basically, their their occupation of these. Um, other territories that are that are controversial well, if i have to be completely fair to history here we're talking about british colonialism right uh, and leasing the land from china the land was always china's uh but uh the problem is is after 200 years of british rule and democracy and everything else and a promise by the chinese government to preserve that democracy going forward um which is now being eroded in Hong Kong, with a lot of little takebacks here and there, and some pretty big ones, uh, that is, uh, that, you know, that's that's maybe more historically accurate. Like I don't, I don't want to. Yeah, I mean, the well, look, look. Here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, no, okay, yes, to to be technically accurate, um, this is this is a result of British colonialism, specifically with Hong Kong. Although, uh, but it was I, an agreement. It wasn't they, right. You know, in, England didn't just invade. The land was leased 
you know, to 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 England for uh, um, you know over a hundred years. So, right. Um, so we've got yeah. One thing that's baffled me yeah. is I keep seeing things in. Um, how do I say this? Yeah, I keep seeing the this thing. Not everybody at Blizzard is in agreement uh, on this issue or whatever. And and that that statement is always applied to the people who don't agree with what Blizzard did, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but what what I'm curious about is is anyone in Blizzard outside of specifically their Chinese marketing department and maybe a few executives, um. Does anybody hold a pro China position on the Hong Kong issue in like that's that's one of the weird sort of things like well not everybody agrees on this issue I'm like how many people agree with China outside of China on this you issue You want to know a secret? <laughs> yes, I do. Not even Netties agrees with the Chinese government. They can't say that. You right. know, they just want to do business. They want to make a lot of money. And they have to work within the government structure in order to do this. And so they will operate within the wishes of the Chinese Communist Party, uh, but they just as soon do without. China loves to just be independent, make a lot of money, and they don't want to be bothered by government interference. But they, they're in an environment where um, the, the Chinese government subsidizes a lot of what they do. They, they do. And uh, the penalties for going against the Chinese government is, well, you know, falling on a couple bullets down a flight of stairs. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite line from uh, from Mystery Men is when uh, Janine Garofalo's dad, when she's a kid, you know, gets gets killed or whatever. And they're like, what's the cause of death? Well, he fell down an elevator shaft, landed on some bullets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're laughing about this. And um, I just want to point out, no, we are having a couple drinks here. Humor gets me through this. But there are real people impacted by this. There right. are real that we're joking about political prisoners and executions. This does happen for real in China. So I just want to point that out. We're not trying to offend anybody here. We're just trying to, um, you know, alleviate some of the stress and through dark humor, maybe highlight some of the issues that we're talking about. Yes, the uh, I guess I guess the. The benefit of of westernized democratic societies is largely a move away from from the very real horrors of uh, of other forms of government, which do involve um, which do involve the disappearance of of people who speak out against the government or against the established authority, uh, the outright killing of of journalists and other people who are critical. So um, yeah, we're 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 joking about some things, but. Uh, obviously sensitive to the real issues that that do plague uh, a, over a billion people's lives um, every day, you know, in a very yep. real way. So, uh, well, let's um, let me pull up this. I'm going to pull up a screen since you're an avatar. I'm going to do a, a screen share of the uh, article here and sure. this Blizzard article. If we want to kind of parse through this, I don't know. Do we want to do you have any main main points to focus on i don't want to just read through the whole statement um, oh, uh, so i i launched that twitter mega thread so it's pretty fresh in my mind i right. guess the the key thing i was trying to point out was that this statement is not drafted to the blizzard community of gamers no <clears throat> no is <laughs> is any statement any more drafted to the community of gamers like uh, just just as a side topic, this is something I've been seeing in anime, in comics, in gaming, um, as I kind of get more involved in these worlds, is that these uh, the corporate entity is almost never speaking to their primary consumer. They're they're always speaking to a business partner. Um, they're speaking to you can tell in, in this statement that they're trying to appease a greater audience um a, a greater social audience than the gaming community and also uh i would say the chinese government as well they're trying to walk a tightrope between these two con conflicting forces well yeah. my 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 whole thesis was that this is this is drafted with gamers as a sort of um afterthought and we got to toss them a bone uh what this is really drafted for to me 
And I have a legal background, but I'm not an attorney. You are an attorney. To me, this reads partially like a legal brief. Here's a statement of facts. Here's what we did to mitigate damages. Here the, right. Here's why here's why we're not guilty. <laughs> One of the things that really stuck out to me was uh we're returning we're returning the money um because that was immediately the most obvious cause of action uh that that the the player would have had, right? right. Uh you breach mm -hmm. my you you breach your contract with me. I won this money fair and square under the rules, and then uh, due to political statement, you say I don't get my winnings. Maybe the ban they can justify um, because they say he disrupted an event or whatever. But but trying to take away winnings already promised that that was an actual legal risk that I think they really quickly wanted to walk back. And it's interesting because they try to downplay that as part of the issue, and so does okay. the uh, the guy who one um in his his response statement came out just a couple hours ago um oh, but it did yeah uh, you see, I, I i was live on stream with uh the quartering when when this statement hit and i said if blizzard was smart they've already discussed it with blitzchung and have his statement ready to go as a follow-up so i haven't seen the statement uh did, did it should we do should we do that one I can yeah, pull it up. I'd love to see his response and to see if it's from him or if it's a mutually, you know, like settlement agreements in, in law, you know, where you, each side has a little letter. <laughs> Let me just suggest that you might be you might be on track with that one, in my opinion. Uh, let's see. I'm going to see if I, if I can pull up the original one. I'll put it up on the. OK. Got a personal statement. It's in Chinese, but it's translated as well. Uh, here we go. Are you able to see that? Okay, I can. I can zoom in. Uh, yeah, I can see that. Let me maximize this. I'll get rid of the '70s TV quiz thing. Okay, okay I see it. So I'm going to scroll down to the English here. So uh, he says, thank you for your attention in the past week. This is a personal statement and my view on Blizzard's latest decision. First of all, I'm grateful for Blizzard reconsidering their position about my ban. Earlier this week, I told the media that I knew I might have penalty or consequence for my act because I understand that my act could take the conversation away from the purpose of the event. Oh, oh, that's a key phrase. It's whenever you see a phrase that is repeated by both parties or it's a talking point. Or, yes. you know, like you see how the media will use the same phrase over and over uh, on a topic. That's because there's been some sort of uh, communication between the parties that this is the specific language to be used. That immediately is a clue to me that this was worked out prior uh, with Blizzard. Oh, yeah. And I would I would bet that um, if I had to bet, I would bet that Blitzchung got more than his winnings. If, yeah. If I had to guess, uh, mm -hmm. he says in the future, I will be more careful on that and express my opinions or show my support to Hong Kong on my personal platforms. Many people have been asking me if I accept this latest decision of Blizzard. I will discuss that in two parts, tournament prizing and suspension for tournament prizing. I quoted what Blizzard said on the official website. They mentioned that I played fair in the tournament and they believe I should receive my prizing. Uh, this is the part I really appreciate. And if the wording sounds weird, it's it's just because of the translation. Uh, hmm. Blizzard also said they understand for some this is not about the prize, but perhaps for others it is disrespectful to even discuss it. Uh, people from Blizzard had explained this to me through a phone call, and I really appreciate that, and I accept their decision on this part. No, <laughs> Which, there it is. It is yeah. plain fact. <laughs> I think it's uh, I think it's like, look, we we have to give you the prize money, otherwise you could sue us. Please take it. Take that plus take take double. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. For, for the second part about the suspension, Blizzard had changed their suspension on me from a six from a year to six months. I thought he was banned for life. That's um, what I thought too. I thought it was a, um, uh, a but, lifetime ban from Hearthstone or it, it was, it, it was 12 months for once for, from tournaments or something like that. And then there was another category that was lifetime. I'm not really certain, but, uh, but most people are just aware of, you know, a 12 month suspension from grandmaster Hearthstone tournaments. 
Um, and, uh, and the other issue I'm not too sure about. Did you, are you aware that Blizzard has maintained the account of Anders Breivik, the, uh, the Norway, uh, mass murderer? Um, his, what? his, his world of Warcraft account still exists, or at least it did as of April of this year. Okay. Wh why? <laughs> well, you know, because they don't support political statements uh, on their platforms, obviously. No, um, so I, uh, full disclosure, a, a Blizzard employee who I will not name and I will not, I will not uh, disclose anything about them other than the fact that it's a Blizzard employee has emailed me a couple times about this issue uh, to kind of parse through um, his perspectives on it and some of the, uh, well, I guess I assume it's a him. Um, I don't actually know because we've just talked by email, but uh, sorry, that's my that's my misogyny peeking through. But uh, his perspectives on it and just kind of processing through uh, the event as it unfolded. And um, they mentioned to me that uh, they believe that Anders Breivik's account still exists. And uh, as far as they know, that there was some stink to kind of delete it after he decided to murder 77 people. Uh, in right. Norway, and uh, and there was some pushback from the top that said, uh, you know, I mean, we obviously don't endorse any sort of killing or whatever, but what do we care about this account? Like, why would we delete the account? And then uh, I verified that in April, they actually brought up his characters in court in Norway uh, at a hearing. And um, cause the, the, you can find the article. It's that he smiled as like these pictures of his characters were brought up well, or maybe, whatever. Maybe they got some order to preserve the account, you know? Yeah, I, I guess it could be. Um, I don't know, but it, I found that to be pretty interesting because, uh, again, like, you know, banning someone for one, one political statement, but then keeping active an account, um, or keeping around an account for, for such a long time. I mean, because that that murder was in what, like 2012, something like that. Yeah, uh, it was a while ago. But yeah, you can you can go look at it. But uh, apparently he looked back and smiled in fondness at his his wow account. So that was uh, very interesting. Um, sorry, that was a, a side tangent uh, because the person brought it up to me. Uh, OK, so uh, they change it from a year to six months. Once again, I appreciate their reconsideration on this. To be honest, mm -hmm. I think six months is still quite a lot to me. Uh, it is. It, it should there be any suspension for this guy, in your opinion? Nope. Like if yeah, they they should they should have walked it all back. Uh, they should have walked it all back, and and they could have still said that you know our rules were unclear because they are. Uh, you know we, we you know we we're not interested in having political discussion dilute the spirit of esports. There's a time and place for that, uh, but you know but he did nothing wrong uh, because our rules didn't currently cover it. But going forward, you know, then this, this will be the penalty. Right. That's, that's what I was thinking. They could, they could make a clear statement about how interviews will be conducted and the limits of those interviews going forward. That way there's unambiguous instructions that this is about the gaming, about the tournament, about your gaming career, about blizzard games, uh, your career uh, playing blizzard games and outside of that, other political discussions have to be uh, out. Otherwise, you would face a penalty. Once you do that in response to something for future infractions, that's that's the way you handle that situation. You say, we don't endorse the views of this guy. You know, I, I'm getting so tired of these companies acting like they have to. They're not only responsible for the views of everything that's said anywhere near their platforms, but that everybody will automatically react. Cause I mean, I think if, if China puts pressure on Blizzard and Blizzard says, look, uh, we're gonna definitely condemn the fact that this guy brought this up, but we're, we're not gonna, like if we lay out a bunch of punishment on him, it's gonna look really bad. Um, maybe I'm unreasonable in what I think China will accept, but I, I just don't see them ghosting Blizzard no, you, for that. You, you, China won't accept it. China won't accept <laughs> no repercussions at all. And that's why this is so transparently, laughably uh, uh, fear of China, Blizzard's fear of China. 
and losing the Chinese market. Because that's what's at stake here. If if the Chinese government is upset with you, your business in China is gone. There's no due process. There's no nothing. It's like one day your servers are on and the next day everything's dark. And they don't care. They don't care. That's uh that's amazing. Um because it I my brain just tells me logically that that they would say, you know, that that they would want to do business as well, that the business would be reciprocal um, and that they would say, you know what, we don't ever we don't ever want to see anything like this again. Uh, but but uh, I, I'll take your word for it. It just it, it just is foreign to me. No, right? They, they don't care. The, the, the political party of China is, is a political apparatus. And uh, China is a huge country with a lot of industry. They already make plenty of money. They're fine with telling, say, and, and I think, you know, they've done this before. Uh, hey, Google, you can't you can't operate here. Oh, Twitter, you can't operate here. I mean, they're all blocked. Right. So uh, they really don't care about the magnitude of foreign business because they generate so much revenue internally as it is. And they are more concerned with political control. And this is why, I mean, the United States, the United U S government couldn't come in here and say, well, you said, uh, you know, uh, you know, that, uh, that we bombed a bunch of people. And so we're going to turn off your servers. You know, <laughs> that would never happen. Right. Right. You'd have to, you, there's no legal basis for that, that, that could happen in this country for a political statement like that. But in China, if you say something that the government does not like, they don't have to go through a court process. They will turn your servers off literally within hours. That's amazing. Uh, it, it consistently blows my mind um, when you when when uh, when I'm personally exposed to the world outside the cushy uh, the cushy world of of again U.S. freedom um, and and I try to I try to expose myself that'll get clipped I try to expose myself to this uh, you know uh, in in various ways but to remind to remind me of where we live. Um, I have a I have a relative who who moved overseas and uh was consistently shocked that the uh socialist government that they lived under would, you know, like uh kill a bunch of students in the streets or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, "Well, uh you are living in uh, a dictatorship." So, um okay, but uh back to it, sorry. Uh but I also uh I'm also being told that I can continue to compete in the Hearthstone Pro circuit, which they mean the Grandmaster tournament. I appreciate this decision they made because Grandmaster, oh excuse me, is currently the highest level tournament in competitive Hearthstone. However, maybe I... that's the separate layer. So if you uh, so it's not just we're talking about two different circuits here. Maybe sure. that's what maybe there was a lifetime ban in 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 the one and the one year in the Grandmaster. I don't know. Gotcha. Just, I don't play Hearthstone competitively, so. Oh, it's Hearthstone. I keep saying Hearthstone. I don't know what it is. Well, okay, so you all <laughs> pronounce it Hearthstone, but internally at Blizzard, we always pronounced it on WoW. The object that brings you back to the your your binds location is a Hearthstone. I think we've been mispronouncing it for years, and the public has the correct pronunciation. So you know, you you can keep calling it hearthstone but i'm gonna call it hearthstone <laughs> well it it seems blizzard is wrong on multiple things <laughs> <laughs> not as infallible as we thought as a uh, gaming company this is however We're, oh worse than ea now oh god poor r.i.p blizzard uh however i wish blizzard can reconsider about their penalty on the two casters involved now what did the casters do um, did they react to the statement in some? I I'm blissfully now, I, ignorant on that. It, apparently, what happened was they were it, there. There is circumstantial evidence that they were in on the statement that 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 he was he he, he told them he was going to say this. So the casters apparently ducked under the table the moment the moment before he uttered those words, "Free Hong Kong." Right. Ah. So. Um, so I think the, you know, the, the reason the casters were punished were, uh, because they were complicit in the, well, we'll get to that in a second because Blizzard has a rule 
about what you know, and that they cited about what he violated. And I don't think he violated the rule, but I'll, I, I, want, I want to defer to you. Yeah, and we can we'll, lawyer that rule. Yeah, we'll bring that up later. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, lastly, many people want to know if I would be competing in Hearth, uh, Hearthstone in the future. Honestly, I have no idea on that yet, since my next tournament is very likely to be the Grandmaster Tournament of next season. It's probably at least a few months from now on. I'll take this time to relax myself to decide if I'm staying in competitive Hearthstone scene or not. Hearthstone changed my uh, the way I live. I really love this community. Blessings to all the players out there, and blessings to Blizzard. Um, so that's uh, that blessings to Blizzard is interesting. Yeah, so this was this is something that I wholly predicted on the quartering stream. I said, what's going to happen is that Blizzard will issue their press release. They will have already spoken with him, and you will see a statement released from him being very nice to Blizzard uh, after that. And that's exactly what's happened here. This is by the playbook. Yep. The, the playbook I know so well from internal Blizzard. <laughs> and uh, it, I mean, it sounds like there's a classic, classic settlement, non-disclosure, non-disparagement uh, is in place here. Um, they, uh, so we get some positive statements. We make sure the other person is not going to provide any negative statements. We add liquidated damages to that agreement and say, if you do make any negative statements not only do we you forfeit those winnings that we're paying you back in any extra uh but you also have to pay us x amount of dollars um for for irreparable damage to our brand and stuff like that and yep. uh and they're gonna say the same thing that if they uh if they say anything outside of what's approved in their statement about the player himself or about his views or even maybe about the issue um they'll get the approval on the statement but but in attaching his name to the issue that uh, they would not disparage him personally in any sort of way. And uh, otherwise they would owe liquidated damages to him. If, if he lawyered up, that would happen. Uh, whether or not he did is, is always a question, but, but uh, if Blizzard was smart, even if he wasn't represented, they would have, they would have come uh, hands out like Oliver, right? Like, <laughs> please, yep. please. Um, okay. So I've got the Blizzard statement pulled back up. Uh, so yeah, this is very much an intro paragraph uh, of a of a lawsuit brief. I think that's an apt description. Here they are talking about how great they are and what their mission statement is: think globally, lead responsibly, and importantly, every voice matters. Unless it says free Hong Kong, encouraging everybody to share their point of view. The actions we took over the weekend are causing people to question if we are still committed to these values. We absolutely are, and let me tell you how you're wrong. <laughs> Well, here, here's the first thing. They go and explain esports as if you don't know what they are. And that, to me, was kind of like a, a, a clue that this was not just meant for gamers, except as an afterthought, but that it was it was really there to explain to the non-gamer press and to governments, U.S. and China both, uh, hey, this is what happened. This is what esports is. Uh, this is what shoutcasters are. Later on, they explain what shout. Every gamer knows what a shoutcaster is. You don't have to explain that. If right. this were to get, if this were to Blizzard community, you don't have to explain what esports is. You don't have to explain what shoutcasters are. You don't have to explain that players get interviewed. Everybody knows this. Who is this for? It's now, not for the game. Forgive my boomerism, but shoutcasters just like a sportscaster for esports, right? Like yeah. that. Okay. You, you get you get you get the color commentary and 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 all that stuff, and it's just yeah. like sports. Oh, it's another Zerg rush, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Uh, I haven't seen a Zerg rush like that since <laughs> 1987. <laughs> Whatever it is. <laughs> this is just like, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, our esports programs are an expression of our vision and values. Uh, esports exist to create opportunities for players around from around the world, from different cultures and different backgrounds to come together to compete and share their passion for gaming. I think that's overstating the value of esports personally. Uh, I think esports exist to make it a, just a boatload so of money saccharin <laughs> it's so saccharin it's like it, it's it's like the kumbaya explanation of esports it's like this isn't just about competing and, and they, they slip the definition here is it's like could gamers come together and compete and share their passion for gaming this is the explanation for normies for senators sitting in congress you know right. uh and, and but it's it's couched 
And the whole thing is peppered with love and value and community. And it's just so unctuous and gooey and it's syrupy. And I think part of it is designed to bore you. Uh, I say that later on. It's like, I think they, they, they're not expecting you to read through this. They want you to skip to the end where there's a, a final resolution because right in the middle of this statement that we're going to get to is the big lie. Yeah. Uh, and, and power leveling a bit. I sit on the board of a charitable foundation and we had a, um, uh, so the, if people don't know how charitable foundations work and maybe I should explain this at some point in time, there's a big pool of money that sits there and earns interest on uh, or, or earnings, interest or earnings, depending on how it's invested, uh, on its investments. Um, and then they take that interest or earnings and they use that to maintain the principal amount while divvying out a portion of the uh, a portion of the interest or minus the administrative costs as charitable giving each year. And that way it's a sustained giving model that that lends itself to a a perpetual existence um, over a long period of time. So one of the one of the investment advisors that uh, that came and spoke to one of our board meetings was a guy who um, they they invest heavily in emerging markets, and he sat down and I I'm I'm twenty I'm probably twenty years the younger on that board, and he sat down and explained to uh, these mid to late 50s and and 60 year olds uh about esports and just how much money is involved and that's kind of how uh this this feels it's an explanation to people who have no idea that people pay money to watch other people play video games at a high level despite yep. the fact that they pay other people money to watch them play regular games at a high level right like they they watch football and basketball and baseball and golf uh, but the idea of playing video games is this new sort of weird thing to that generation. And so he's explaining how much money there is, especially outside of the U.S. in esports. Um, I think Blizzard is really underselling uh, in this statement what esports represents and, and breaking uh, an esport market in China and South Korea and Japan you're talking about a market that is bigger than the NFL. It's bigger than the NBA. Um, it's it's crazy amounts of money sitting sitting there waiting to enter Blizzard's pockets. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. So they go on. It's an, extremely important to protect for us to to us to protect these channels and the purpose they serve to bring the world together through epic entertainment, celebrate our players, and build diverse and inclusive communities. As to how these values apply to this case, yeah, we're just going ahead and making a fact statement. Well, yeah, look, look at this. It, 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 <laughs> look at this section. It, it's 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 numbered out first, second, and I think there's even a third, and everything's indented. It's like clause, 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 and and yeah, we're going to set out the facts of the case here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so our official tournaments broadcast was used as a platform for a winner of this event to share his views with the world. We interview competitors. So here's your bullet points. They even indent them. They don't have the actual bullet points or a numbering system. They indent them, though. We interview competitors who are at their t at the top of their craft to show how they feel. Uh, we want to experience that moment with them. Hearing their excitement is a powerful way to bring us together. Over the weekend, Blitzchung used his segment to make a statement about the situation in Hong Kong. In very violation, dry, very factual, and then yeah, yep. In violation of rules, he acknowledged and understood, and this is very why legalese. We right took there. action. Yep, he signed a document, and in that document, which is probably uh, several pages that no one has ever read, it says that you shall, uh, the player shall not take any action which would lead to a negative impression of blizzard blah 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 it's not going to say which would make a, an overtly political statement most likely um they'll couch it in language that is very vague if i had to guess nick uh, here's my point if this was written to the blizzard community as it was stated they would have just said uh blitzchung agreed to rules when he joined the competition they wouldn't use this legal language uh, about how 
Blitzchung used his segment to make a statement in violation of rules he acknowledged and understood. Acknowledged and understood. That's something out of the uh, legal dictionaries, right? That's like a term, a term of art right there. They're, yeah, they're being very clear. Uh, it's probably lifted directly from the document that starts, I acknowledge and understand that dot, dot, dot. Right. Yeah, that's that's how that's what they say. Uh, that's what these agreements say right at the top. Uh, I hereby acknowledge and understand. So why is there legal language in a what is ostensibly supposed to be a heartfelt communication to Blizzard customers who are gamers, not lawyers? I, I, again, I argue this is not for the gamer. Yeah, it's uh, I think you're right. That is for the normie community. I think it's also for investors. Um, I, I really do. I, I don't think it's for normal. I think it's for investors, mainstream financial press, and governments. Oh, I, I said what... normies. I meant normie gamers. Uh, my bad. Um, I meant the gaming community, the normal audience of Blizzard, uh, is what I was what I was trying to convey. I just did it poorly. But yeah, no, it's I, not. It's, it's not for them at all. It's not for the normal uh, audience. Right. Otherwise, they would use simpler language. They're not using simple language here. They're using very specific legal term, terms of phrase. Uh, you know, turn turns of phrase. Is that how you say it? Yes. And and if they were talking to gamers, it would not sound like this. That's that's my whole point. And it wouldn't be structured this way either. Right. Every voice matters, and we strongly encourage everyone in our community to share their viewpoints in the many places available to express themselves. However, the official broadcast needs to be about the tournament and a place where all are welcome. In support of that, we want to keep the official channels focused on the game. Um, in in a in a an aside from this, and maybe you can weigh in on this, political statements made in safe areas are weaker than political statements made in unsafe areas, right? Like, yes. whatever you think about anything, especially if Blitzchung actually knew the risks of his statement, that makes his statement matter. Mm -hmm. That, uh, I was, uh, there was a, I listened to Malcolm Gladwell's podcast. I've talked about it a couple times. I like it. And he did a long podcast about um, uh, these uh, sort of, I, I don't want to call them social justice, but literally social justice uh, protesters at these various colleges who, for example, want the Andrew Jackson Library renamed, right? But they um, they want to come into these boardrooms and they want to just yell and scream a whole bunch of stuff, but then they don't want any repercussion that's negative to occur. Uh, and they're unwilling to sacrifice their position at the school they're unwilling to sacrifice the tuition that they paid um what's interesting about this to me is that blitzchung felt so so heavily about the uh hong kong issue that if he actually did know if he was aware that this would be a problem for him as they've both stated then that makes his statement more impactful and more important than it ever could have been and it's interesting because in doing so blizzard gave it that import and impact and i think that's yeah. kind of funny and uh, that's schadenfreude all over the place for me uh, yeah I, <laughs> <laughs> I mean yeah i mean he says he knew what was going to happen you know that that he knew what he was risking and so that that makes the statement not some sort of childish prank not some sort of, you know, uh, uh, funny antic, but a, a real political statement, the highest form of speech that should be protected in this country, right? Absolutely. So, um, so for Blizzard to come down so hard on the highest form of protected speech in the United States, to me, is a warning flag about the encroachment of the lowest, what I call the lowest common denominator of freedom in a global economy. That when you have uh, companies that are dependent on worldwide revenue and large authorita authoritarian countries, uh, you will automatically sink to the lowest level of human rights, freedom, and freedom and 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 freedom of speech and censor and and censorship uh, of your markets. And that's what's happening here. What it's is it? Oh, Blizzard go is going by China's standards of speech, not American standards of speech. This is why senators are upset. 
don't we have a similar situation happening happening with China and the NBA, for example, where NBA players are being forced to stand for the Chinese national anthem? Yeah, they're being forced to stand for the anthem, and players in the U.S. are being ejected from games for holding up a sign that says "Free Hong Kong." Which is can you imagine that? Like it, the idea. I mean, the idea that Colin Kaepernick's contract might not have been renewed in part because of his personal statement to kneel during the U.S. national anthem has sparked endless hours of discussion, of controversy, of demands for investigation, of demands for resignations. And yet we're fine forcing players to stand for a flag that doesn't fly over their own heads and for uh, to make statements about countries that they're not in, right? Like, or that they're not, so they're not You're talking about to. double standards here, right? Yeah. Where we're saying, hey, we should have, we should protect political speech and, and allow kneeling in a U.S. game. But when we're in China, <laughs> we're going to have everybody stand or else. Um, it, which is it? It's one way or the other, right? right. Um, and it's interesting, there is a double standard in this case, too. Are you aware of American University's uh, Hearthstone team and, and what and what the uh, students there did? No, I have no idea. So they were in a, uh, an official Blizzard tournament stream, and they held up a sign that said, Free Hong Kong, and it was even worse. It, it, I, I don't want to use the word worse. Even more provocative than what Blitzchung did. Blitzchung said, Free Hong Kong. These guys held up a sign that said, Free Hong Kong, Boycott Blizzard. Boycott Blizzard. Guess what happened to them? Big fat nothing. Blizzard waved it away. Okay, so here we have a case where if Americans do this in a Hearthstone competition and there's and Blizzard rules that there was, you know, that there was no penalty here, safe, but in Hong Kong. A Hong Kong player, uh, you know, in Taiwan where this tournament went on, a Hong Kong player says this about free Hong Kong. Same message, even less provocative. One year penalty, winnings revoked, harsh statement on on Weibo uh, praising the Chinese the Chinese value system. You know, it's like there's a double standard here that hasn't been reconciled by Blizzard, and it makes no sense until you follow the money. Right. I gotta, I gotta clarify something. The uh, the the NBA players standing at the national anthem was a Babylon Bee article. Uh, it was it was satirizing the um, the actual the the censorship of the protests that was going on. Uh, okay. During the NBA game, but the, so the that, that didn't actually happen. The standing, the forcing them to stand was apparently from the Babylon Bee during the okay. Chinese national anthem. So I just want to clarify that. But uh, but no, there was. Um, but this American University Hearthstone tournament is real, and there is a real double standard here in Blizzard's behavior. Because they're saying in this statement, you know, that – well, we'll get to that. Later on in the statement, he says – Blizzard says that uh, he did – what he did was wrong, and he himself acknowledges it, and therefore the penalty is uh, is appropriate. And yet in this other case, there's no penalty at all. There's no penalty at all for saying – you know, the same thing that he said, plus boycott Blizzard. <laughs> okay. Right. right. All right. I don't get that. <laughs> okay. So back to the statement. Second, what is the role of shoutcasters for these broadcasts? We hire shoutcasters to amplify the excitement of the game. They elevate the watchability and help the esports viewing experience stay focused on the tournament and our amazing players. Third. Again, if you are a... Uh, if you are part of the Hearthstone competitive community, the audience that watches those games, you don't need to be told what a shoutcaster is. It's right. like saying, oh, at a basketball game, you've got commentators who, you know, talk about, you know, what's happening on the game and offer color. You know, just you don't do that. This is not a letter to the community. Exactly. Uh, third, were our actions based on the content of the message? <laughs> listen, listen, no. Part of thinking globally, leading responsibly, and every voice matters is recognizing that we have players and fans in almost every country in the world. 
Our goal is okay. to help. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Interrupt when, whatever. When, when you are making a statement about it, <laughs> when you are making a statement about um, how you're not violating your values, the last thing you should bring up are the very values that you violated. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> just, just don't bring that up at all. Just say <laughs> Right. Like, here are our values, and here's how we actually didn't violate them, even though we so obviously did. It's just, it's like, let me remind you of what we, we should be doing so it can stand in, in stark contrast to what we actually did. Yeah, it's pretty funny that thinking globally ignores Hong Kong completely. Uh, and not only ignores Hong Kong, but it ignores the disparity between a country of, or a territory of, 35 to 40 million people in favor of a of a country of 1 billion right uh it mm -hmm. it it it's going in favor of a superpower versus um versus a large metropolis uh leading responsibly they absolutely were irresponsible in how they how they led anything here and and this statement itself is them not leading but following right like that's that's the funny point it's, here it's they're they're making yeah. a responsive walk back. This isn't leadership. This is It's reactive, not proactive. Exactly. Leading is a proactive uh, uh, event primarily. And every voice matters, drowning out the smallest possible voice. The smallest yep. voice you could find is the individual stating a political statement. Uh that that is the smallest voice. A guy who who no one like not not to denigrate him in any sort of way, but but outside of the Hearthstone community, no one cares that this guy exists and plays this game, right? Like, mm -hmm. who is he? So he's a guy who works his butt off, uh, gets uh, literally gets good as best as he possibly can, and goes to win the tournament and make this statement, like that is every voice that he is the everyman. He's the guy who. Who with nothing uh just happened to be better than everybody else at one thing and makes a statement um it's just funny that yeah boom 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 fail 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 straight in a row uh but but you know pushing the message of of uh xi jinping or whatever is um that he's got a hard time getting the message out or she i don't even know he she uh our goal he. it's a he okay there's some there's uh there's some female in a leadership position in China that uh, I no, saw. You're, you're, you're thinking of the governor uh, of Hong Kong. Oh, the governor of Hong Kong. Okay, yeah, I got it. I mm -hmm. got those two mixed up. Um, our goal is to help players connect in areas of commonality, like their passion for our games, and create a sense of shared community. The specific views expressed by Blitz Chung were not a factor in the decision we made. <laughs> I want to be clear. Our relationships in China had no influence on our decision. Nobody on earth believes that. Well, here is why it's it was a lie and it continues to be a lie to this day. It's because of the statement that Blizzard's Hearthstone account made on the largest social network in China, Weibo, which directly contradicts this and they didn't take it down. It's still up there. Do you know this statement? No. No, I, I saw uh, either, I think it was you referenced it, or maybe it was, um, I think it, it was you. This is, this is China's, uh, this was posted on the official Hearthstone account in China, and this is Blizzard's statement. We are very angered and disappointed at what happened at the event and do not condone it in any way. We also highly object the spreading of personal political beliefs in this manner. Effective immediately, we've banned the contestant from events and terminated work with the broadcasters. We will always respect and defend the pride of our country, meaning China. <laughs> Look, yeah, I, I think you had, you had shared that tweet. <laughs> Look, Nick, if, if, if Blizzard is smart, they know that that's out there because that has to be Blizzard approved. And uh, the fact that the statement is still up, that they didn't pull it down before issuing this, I don't, I don't want to call it an apology because there's no apology. 
here in this statement issuing this uh we did the right thing but uh it's okay we'll just uh we'll just look to, we'll just diminish the sentence a little bit because uh you know maybe we overreacted so you cannot say that it was not influenced by china when this statement is still on the official blizzard account for hearthstone in china and that it's, is uh... a big lie it's in Chinese, correct? It's written. Yes, it's in yeah. Chinese. And the reason it's not taking it down is, is probably because I think China would be pretty upset if they walked that back. Well, and they, they know the likelihood that, uh, or they're, I shouldn't say they know, they're hedging heavily on the likelihood that a Chinese translated statement will not have an impact locally in the US and it will have a disproportionately positive impact in China. I I have to sort of disagree with you here, Nick. They know it's out there. They've been following social they know the translations out there. Right, but, right. But, but what but, I'm saying is is that they're uh, they're banking on it having a bigger, a disproportionately better effect on their Chinese relationship than negative effect on their American relationships. That's correct. They are choosing profit over whether or not you believe the lie. They don't care that you don't believe the lie. They don't care that it's it's a naked lie. Because, um, oh, go ahead. The, 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 because operating in China is more important. So this uh, than, than the truth than the truth. This brings me back. This brings me to an interesting sort of thing that happened, kind of in the uh, in the YouTube sphere, um, when when Sargon got thrown off, Sargon of Akkad got thrown off of uh, Patreon, and Dick Masterson criticized him for not providing some sort of apology. Uh, and Dick's point was, I don't know if it's correct or not, but his point was sometimes a company or an entity is looking for some level of apology that they can take and show to, to mom or dad, right? And say, look, we got this out of them. Are we good now to go back to making money? And that's enough. And uh, so this, uh, this American statement, I would suggest, is that. Right. Like uh, they they leave the Chinese statement up, but they have the uh, and and that's that's to say, look, look, China, we have this statement here. Uh, this is what we really mean. But we're going to say this other statement later. And that statement is just so we can keep investors here happy and let them know that we're definitely taking care of things and 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 blah, 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 blah. It's like that that thing that you take to the uh to the per it's it's a permission slip almost right mm -hmm. um and and both of these are their own sort of permission slips and it's it's kind of great in that way because they conflict completely <laughs> it's, it's two different field trips on the same day um but uh yeah and that yeah. that yeah that's just it's just inexcusable and uh, i yeah, go on. This is it, yeah. that is the shocker. And you know what? They buried it. They buried it in the middle of the document. There's a lot of boring stuff right beforehand that everybody already knows about. And you know, they just they just wanted to drop it in there and then move quickly on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. So it, it, look, they, they the whole crux of this issue is that sentence, right? Our relationships in China had no influence on our decision. That's what needs to be discussed here at length. But instead, it gets one sentence out of, what, hundreds, <laughs> dozens? Like, what is this? It, it, one sentence. It's the key issue that everybody wants to hear about. Then, And it gets one sentence in this whole thing. Right, right. Uh, yeah, uh, and again... I want a list. I want a McCarthy list of names of people at Blizzard who do support China over Hong Kong in this. Not not for public release, but just for comedy. Like, because I think that list would be so absurdly well, short. You you've uh, heard <laughs> about you've heard about the how the the placards at the Blizzard statue were covered up by by some employee, right? And you know the values about listen, you know he, uh, every voice is heard, stuff like that. They were covered up with notebook paper and taped on it, uh, ostensibly to highlight the hypocrisy of the value on display, right? And so um, you know that there are very unhappy. And there was a there was a Blizzard walkout. I guess you know maybe uh, I don't know how many people were involved, right. but. 
people at Blizzard seem to be very upset about this, and rightfully so. And um, so, you know, you asked uh, who actually is is towing the the party line in, inside that company. I don't think anybody is. I yeah, don't think I would, anybody's happy about it. It's got to be even the president. Yeah, it's got to be. No, it, it just logis- logically has to be no one. It's it's got to be almost an entirely profit motivated situation. Uh, th- so there's there's someone in the chat here who is um, they're one of the people who is not able to delete their Blizzard accounts. Have you heard about this? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, his <laughs> so his his Blizzard uh, oh his he's he's talking about like all the stuff that he's done to try and get them to delete his account. <laughs> his address is uh, hashtag Free Hong Kong. Stewart hashtag boycott Kipu hashtag boycott blizzard hashtag china's dog blizzard as 666 that's what he put in his address account since he can't since he can't delete it apparently <laughs> oh jeez i've seen some pretty funny creative attempts to get blizzard to ban accounts uh yeah, from people yeah. who can't delete them can you so, can you talk look, about like what that function is cuz i yeah. i don't right, understand so- it so Blizzard is famous for so basically this is a function that deletes all your accounts, all your data, removes all your personal information. Uh, probably this has some GDPR function. So you right. know the, the European data privacy law that says that you can ask companies to delete all your data. So Blizzard probably implemented this as part of that process. And as we do at Blizzard, we probably didn't have a chance to test it at massive scale. So I think what happened was the system was written but got hit by so many people uh, that it couldn't handle it. And that is that is very plausible to me. I don't buy into the conspiracy theory that Blizzard turned off the system and deliberately disabled it. I don't buy into that. But what I do think is funny is that it's still not fixed. <laughs> <laughs> Blizzard has the best engineers in the world, okay? Right. <laughs> And this is a web application. This is nowhere near as complex as, say, a massively multiplayer game. And they, and it's still not fixed. And you know what? I don't think it's going to be fixed until after BlizzCon. <laughs> right, right. Con- conveniently so. They I want... Think- they want people to they want people to change their minds. They want people to forget. They want to bill them one more cycle and hope they don't notice uh, so that their account remains active and then they come back and they go, "You know what? I guess I guess after all that, I really do like Diablo or WoW or whatever." Right? Yep. Uh, that's a that's a frequent tactic of of people. Just rely on the the laziness and forgetfulness and uh, dopamine rush to overcome whatever stupid thing you did. Uh, that's that's a great strategy. Um, okay, back to this thing. Uh, we have these rules to keep the focus on the game and on the tournament to the benefit of the global audience, and that was the only consideration in the actions we took. If this has been the opposing viewpoint delivered in the same divisive and deliberate way, we would have felt and acted the same. Do you buy that? Not for a second, not for a second. If if someone had had shouted out, you know, uh, uh, I don't know, like, uh, so what's the opposite statement? Invade Hong Kong? <laughs> you know? It's uh, Hong Kong belongs to China, maybe like something that yeah. simple. Hong Kong, belo- it, it, Hong Kong needs to remain Chinese. Uh, yeah. I don't think they would have taken any action. In fact, if they did take action against that statement, they would be in deeper water with the Chinese government. Oh yeah. Oh, there's, yeah. there's no way there's they would no take that statement or the, there's right. no way they would refuse to act on that. Conveniently. We'll never know because from now on, all political speech is banned by blizzard. Uh, so they say I would, mm-hmm. I would love, I would love for people to start uncovering just instance after instance of ongoing political speech at blizzard events on blizzard channels um you know whether it be about u.s elections whether it be about foreign affairs there's got to be stuff people say well, the things election, all the, the time elections are coming up and we have a very disliked president so if someone holds up a sign that says you know uh you know fuck the potus then then uh will blizzard act probably not 
I think. <laughs> Blizzard, Blizzard needs to release a fighting game because they'd be immediately obligated to ban Sonic Fox, right? Like they'd have to. <laughs> So that's that's what we need them to do. Okay, what could Blizzard have done better, and where do we go from here? Over the past few days, many players, casters, esports fans, and employees have expressed concerns about how we determine the penalties. We've had a chance to pause. They had a chance to pause in the first place. They just chose not to take it, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. To listen to our community and to reflect on what we could have done better. In hindsight, our process wasn't adequate, and we reacted too quickly. We want to ensure that we maintain a safe and inclusive environment for all of our players and that our rules are process and processes are clear. All of this is in service to another important Blizzard, uh, Blizzard value. Play nice, play fair. In the tournament itself, Blitzchung played fair. This is weird. In asterisk. Yeah, because it's like, did he not speak fairly? Like, that's a weird implication, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Uh, yeah. They could have just said I, I, he played fair without the asterisks. But that's a, that's a, it's almost like a dog whistle, right? Yeah, it, it, it's basically saying it's it's the big butt. It's like he played fair, but he's still guilty. You know? Right. <laughs> and yeah. Uh, we now believe he should receive his prizing. So prizing must be how they weirdly internalize the word prize. Um, we understand. People have pointed out that ling I guess some linguist who's both an English major and a native and a, uh, I don't know a, a fluent Chinese speaker went through this on Twitter part by part, pointing out all the sort of like strange punctuation and terminology and and this word prizing, and that is an odd word. And 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 people are saying, well, that proves it was written in China. It's like, well, maybe. But I think, you know, what's happening here and what we would normally do at Blizzard is we would get all hands on deck and get everybody's input in crafting the, a really good statement. So if there's some stuff in here from China and stuff, some stuff in the U.S., I, I think that's just normal. I, I, I wouldn't read too much into that. You know what's uh, surprising is the present participle of prize, P-R-I-S-E. Not P R I Z E. I'm just I just pulled it up on the definition. Oh, I was like, whoa, you're, you're... <laughs> No, you know, I mean I uh, I am an English <laughs> I'm an English major, but I'm not a linguist. But yeah, I pulled it up on Google and and prizing with a Z is the present participle of prize with an P R I S E, which is use force in order to move, move apart or open, or to obtain something from someone with ethical or effort or difficulty so it's like you know you prize something away from someone not a prize as a noun it's a it's a present participle of a verb which is weird that's a weird choice I it is so odd it's so odd um maybe there's some english definition of it i i don't know uh i guess it's also the present participle of prize P R I Z E in in the Cambridge Dictionary. So maybe maybe a Brit wrote it. I don't. I guess that would make sense if the Brits Brits are going back to colonializing Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. They would write the statement. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I have no idea where that word came from, but it's so odd, and it's not something that that you would say to gamers. You know, it just the the language is all wrong. If this were a real apology or a mea culpa to gamers who are very upset with Blizzard about this. I mean, there's, there, there's no acknowledgement about that. It's barely, it's like, oh, some people are upset. You know, it's like, no, everybody's upset. <laughs> you know? and, um, and, and you wouldn't talk to them this way. You, you would say, we believe he should receive what he won. We, we should, his prize. You yeah, know? you just say prize. Like, you know, not. Prizing almost, you know what? Prizing sounds like, like a, either a marketing or legal legalese word right like mm -hmm. uh it's something you would see in a contract and go that's weird like your prizing rather than just your prize uh it, it's almost like a prizing is an analytic that we that we have applied to something it's it's weird um we understand that for some reason this is not about the prize and perhaps for others it is disrespectful to even discuss it that was mirrored in um mirrored in the winner's statement in Blitzchunk's statement uh, if you guys well, remember why? I don't get that why is it 
disrespectful to even discuss the prize. I think it would be because when they called him and said, hey, uh, Mr. Blitzchung, we realize we acted inappropriately. We want to we want to actually extend the prize money to you. He probably said, it's not about the prize. How dare you? It's oh, about the, oh, oh, oh. you know, it's it's disrespectful it, to bring up the uh, money. This isn't about the money. It's about the principle. Okay, I get it. Right. All right. So that, <laughs> I would guess, is uh, for him... It was likely if if I'm lawyering this, it it was likely important for him to have it put in there so that people didn't think that he was pressuring Blizzard over the lack of money. Because my theory craft is that Blizzard reached out to him going uh, preemptively when their lawyers said, if this guy wants to sue you, he has a cause of action so long as you deprive him of the money. Everything else we probably have a right to do. It won't look good, but we have a right to do it. But the money was promised to him under the terms of the agreement. The terms are vague. He could drag us through discovery on this. He may actually even win because a jury is going to definitely be sympathetic. Uh, so we've got to give, we've got to get him to accept the money back because that forecloses the cause of action on monetary damages. Is my uh, guess. Is okay. my guess. And so then they they said we'd like to we'd like to offer you the prize money. And he said, I, you know, that's not what this is about. Uh, that's disrespectful. How dare you? And then as a the conversation mellowed, um, they'd agree to say, you know what, we'll we'll make it clear that the prize money isn't what this is about, but uh, we feel it's necessary to provide it to you type thing. That's my guess, uh, based okay. only on my guess. Uh, that is not our intention, right? It's not their intention to buy him off, too, uh, is what they're saying here. Mm-hmm. But playing fair also includes appropriate pre and post match conduct. No, it doesn't. Like it include it includes sportsmanlike pre and post match conduct, right? Like that's what playing right. fair includes. It has nothing to do with an extraneous political statement. That has nothing to do with playing fair. And uh, to me, this is what you're talking about, where they're trying to apply facts to law now, right? This is their the R of their Iraq statement, uh, yep. intro reason or intro rule analysis conclusion, uh, mm -hmm. th or the, this is the A, not the R, sorry, the, the A, the analysis where they're saying, we gave you the rules, we gave you the facts in the intro, now we're going to analyze how these facts violated those rules, and they're going to say that him making a political statement somehow equates to a violation of the playing fair provision of our legalese statement. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's it just uh, it it just reads. It's it's such a CYA document. You know? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's from for you know it, it, it like I said in, in my concluding statement to this whole thing. It's like well I'll get to that in a bit, but this it, it just it's it's just full of legal ease here, right. and this is not a letter that you would write to the community. Yeah, especially when a player accepts recognition for winning in a broadcast, which is weird because that's that's another one of those things that uh, we have some sort of like he incurs liability by accepting recognition like sudden, that's what matters. Are they suggesting that if he wasn't accepting recognition for winning <laughs> that he could have made the statement? Like, why is that even there? <laughs> Yeah, it's like if you take the money, you can't make the statement, but if you don't take the money... You know? Right. Uh, when we think about the suspension, six months for Blitzchung is more appropriate after... Which is funny. That's a smart wording right there. They don't say it's appropriate. They say it's more appropriate than whatever the other one was. Well, the implication is that, you know, it was fully appropriate to give him a 12-month suspension. You know, and and it 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 it, it doesn't say that the twelve month suspension was not appropriate. They're just saying that the six month suspension is more appropriate. This shoe fits a little better, and that's not a, that's not a walk back of them being wrong at all. That's not what the community wants to hear. The community wants to hear it's like we overreacted. We were wrong. We're sorry. We um, apologize. None of that is here. Uh, here's the weird thing. I'm getting something in the chat that says the date of the letter indicates that it was sent from China. Yeah. 
Uh, well, yes, because it was sent on Friday, and October 11th was the date. And yet, it, when it came up uh, at well, about 5.30 Pacific time on Friday, the date came up as October 12th, which in, which is morning in China. It's yeah, like it comes eight, out as, as midnight 1858 uh, in China, but... Or, or that's no, no, GMT no, it, or in Europe, GMT plus zero. 8.30, 8.30 a.m., somewhere around there, which is, you know, uh, and here's, I don't think that's a big deal. So what if it's from China? You know what? Probably some executive from Blizzard or Jay, uh, Jay Allen Brack himself would, had to fly out there to NetEase to, to figure out how to talk their way through it without offending you know, the communist Chinese government and get a statement out there. This is a, this is an international incident. You have U S senators commenting on this. Uh, you know, it comes on the heel of the NBA stuff and Apple pulling the, the app for Hong Kong protesters. This is a international incident. You can bet your ass that somebody was on a plane immediately to net ease in China, working out a strategy for this. So, yeah, it was it, so. What if it was posted from China, though? Uh, it doesn't mean that it's an official Communist Party statement. I think that that's trying to the implication that some people are trying to tie to this. It just means that Blizzard was scrambling, going all around, try, you know, trying to figure this out, trying to figure out what they're going to say to get out of this mess. So, so yeah, it's it's feasible to me that it was posted from China. Is it relevant to their guilt in any ways? I don't think so. Is is Blitzchung located in China or Hong Kong personally? I understand that he is from Hong Kong, but the tournament was in Taiwan. Okay, so uh it's reasonable to suspect that he returned back to Hong Kong following the tournament. Um the, yep. my putting him at grave risk if that's the case. Here's here's a question. Uh, for people e either way wh wherever he is uh another possible logical and non non conspiracy explanation for why this is released on china time is because they were working with him yeah in the time where he was located and uh and and trying to make things correct in that way and then uh that would that would you know if if they're on his clock so to speak working out the agreement once the agreement is done they're trying to push it out when they can uh especially getting it out on on a friday <laughs> on a friday before yep. the news cycle resets um because they don't want this thing to go out on sunday for sure uh they don't want it to go out on monday they want it to hit friday after the sunday paper's been written and people aren't going to be reading the news on saturday as much is exactly is my opinion, so that, that that's exactly what we, we we would literally talk about this at Blizzard. It's like let's release this on Friday, but but we've never when I was there, we never waited till after after hours. <laughs> right. They waited. They waited till everybody was already home or driving home or leaving for the weekend. I uh, that, that that to me is just extra spicy. That's just <laughs> well, if they if they had to wait for that guy to wake up get him on the phone and knock out the final approval and say, here, we've got the statement drafted. We need you to okay this right away uh, or else he offers off the table. And he, you know, he gets up at seven in the morning. Uh, he reads a statement, refer, confers with his lawyer if he has one, says, okay, I accept. Uh, this is where I think you and I differ. I don't think he, it, it, it's not really, you don't run out and get a lawyer out there like you do here. You no, know? I'm not. I'm not suggesting that he did have one. I'm just saying if he did, he would. You know, uh, you'd talk to him type thing. Yeah, I don't think he had any real. I would guess that he had no representation and no real idea of uh, whatever rights he would have under U.S. law, particularly since he's he's not from here. And uh, so you you know you mentioned the prize money and stuff. I, I don't think that's the way it went down. I imagine basically that you know Jay Allen Brack probably personally called him. And uh, and there were other people on the phone, and and they and they worked something out verbally, without the presence of counsel and without any sort of awareness of, 
you know, Blizzard's potential liability here. And as, as far as their liability goes, uh, we'll, we'll go through the clause later. They, they clearly say up front in the contract that, that the prize money can be revoked under this specific circumstance. So, but, but we'll get to that in a second. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, let's, hold on one second. Let's, uh, let's finish up the letter. Cause we, we've only got like a couple paragraphs like, like this. Uh, okay. Sorry. Sorry. Um, where are we? There is a consequence. Oh wait, no. Six months is more appropriate. After which time he can compete in the Hearthstone pro circuit again, if he so chooses, there is a consequence for taking the conversation away from the purpose of the event and disrupting or derailing the broadcast. Neither of those things happened. Right. He literally just said the phrase and that was it. There was no disruption. There was no derailment. There was nothing taken away from the event. It was a tiny, tiny soundbite. Yeah. It was not disruptive at all. It's, it's a guy. Uh, it would have been the same, similar effect if some guy ran in the background and said, free Hong Kong, and then ran off, right? Like it's a, it's a moment. <laughs> It's a moment of this interview. Well, um, that would have been more distracting. If, if somebody ran by in the background shouting that, I, I would argue that that was more distracting than what he did, which is it, it, it was an interview. He, right. you know, they're going to ask him questions. He's going to say stuff. This is one of the things he said. You know, uh, did, did you know? Did it disrupt the broadcast? No. Uh, did it disrupt? Did it take away from the tournament? Tournament was over. He won. You know, right. it's just there was no derailment here. Uh, with regard to the casters, remember their purpose is to keep the event focused on the tournament. That didn't happen here, and we are setting their suspension to six months as well. Uh, so they did. Res they reset they, that. They or didn't. They didn't punish the people. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> they didn't punish the, the the people streaming the American University Hearthstone tournament. It's like, it, what are they punishing them for? They don't say. Right. Well, they they failed to keep it focused. They failed to stop him from saying it. That's how the, how, the, how could they anticipate? How could they? I mean, the argument is that they did know he was going to say it, but you can't really you can't really read their minds, right? You know, it, it's like I I don't it, it, they it, this was scorched earth. This was Blizzard going out and saying immediate. You know, we've got a containment breach. Uh, nuke nuke the site from orbit. It's the only way to be sure. That's what they were doing. Well, and, if the uh, if the rumors are true, damage. If the rumors are true, Blizzard's about to have its most popular, uh, what's likely to be its most popular and profitable release in specifically China in two weeks, and I think maybe they just. It, maybe they that's the the reason for their overreaction right like you're gonna screw this up for us <laughs> we put a bunch of money into this stupid mobile game and we're about to make a trillion trillion dollars and yeah, we're about to it. launch diablo immortals and and you're gonna ruin everything <laughs> Right. They didn't this this was not a disruption of the tournament. This was a disruption of Blizzard's profitability plans of expansion in China. Absolutely. Uh so moving forward we will continue to apply tournament rules to ensure our official broadcasts remain focused on the game and are not a platform for divisive social or political views. Okay, this is what I call the big promise to all governments. We are so sorry, China. We yeah. will never, ever let this happen again. We're so sorry. The gamers don't care about this. Right. Th and, this, is not, and, this is not their concern. This is the big promise to governments, both, both U.S. and China, actually. We won't cause an international incident. We're very sorry. <laughs> right, and it's but it's specifically couched. I want to be clear on the statement you just made i think it's specifically couched in the fact that it's china because there's no incident in some players saying that the u.s owes reparations to germany or britain or uh austria right like there's no random other country out there outside of maybe um well you've got china you've got venezuela You've got Cuba. You've got a couple of these um, communist-style dictatorships that exist, North Korea, uh, but but obviously the economic powerhouse being China 
and in it being the most prominent. But if someone had come out with some controversial statement against Ghana, for example, no one cares. And this this mm-hmm. uh, this statement doesn't matter. No one cares if there's a there is no divisive political views about Ghana uh, that that we're going to be talking about here, um, at least as far as I could tell. Although maybe it'd be interesting. I'd be really interested if there was anybody who said anything about something somewhere like South Africa uh, or something mm-hmm. like that, where there where there are divisive political and social issues, but they're um, routinely they're they're much lower economic impact than something like China, for example. Uh, that that'd be really interesting to see how Blizzard would have handled that, but we never will now because now they're gonna go they're gonna they're gonna go DFE on everything, right? Like they have to. Oh yeah. Yeah, that they're going to they're going to just basically everything is going to be on a, a 30 second or one minute loop and they'll just nix anything going forward. Yep. And the person will lose their money quietly. <laughs> mm-hmm. One of our goals at Blizzard is to make sure that every player everywhere in the world, regardless of political views, religious beliefs, race, gender or any other consideration, always feel safe and wel- welcome both competing in and in playing our games. At Blizzard, we are always listening and finding how, ways to improve. <laughs> how does Blitzchung feel safe? Listen, how does Blitzchung you, feel safe? I've, you, I, I've got the answer to this. Oh, okay. Blizzard are actually the heroes of this story, and this is something that how dare you not acknowledge what they've done? Blitzchung was going to get murdered by the Chaicom government. That was going to happen until Blizzard intervened and told him he was wrong. And uh, penalized him on behalf. Now the Chinese, <laughs> now the Chinese are not going to attack Blitzchung. Uh, he won't. He won't accidentally be um, sent polonium or anything like that uh, because Blizzard has properly chastised him by stopping him from playing Hearthstone for six months. <laughs> We've protected you because if something happens <laughs> to you now, you'll be a martyr. <laughs> in in a weird way, though, like read without the jokes, without the jokes, reading this from that perspective, do you think Blizzard would ever try and sell that position? Look, we're actually sympathetic to all sorts of political views from all sorts of people, but what we really don't want is our platform being the cause of someone putting themselves into political danger. Uh, well, then the last thing they should have done is give him a 12-month suspension, revoked his <laughs> earnings, and made him an international incident. Right. The only people, the only thing that Blizzard is keeping safe here is themselves. They put him in danger. They drew such attention to it. They did such harm to their own reputation with customers. And they 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 blew this so out of proportion and then they sent them back to Hong Kong. Where guess what? They're arresting people for saying stuff like that. And it's it's crazy because outside of Hearthstone players, who ever would have heard of this? Like le- legitimately, I'm I'm a guy on YouTube who talks about political stuff. I don't think I would have heard about this at all. And I've even talked about the Hong Kong thing because I don't watch or follow Hearthstone tournaments or esports, generally speaking, unless there's some weird legal issue like Tenny versus FaZe Clan and stuff like that. But what, uh, yeah, w- what you're saying is hilarious. They amplified his statement more than it ever would have reached. It, well, it, it, yeah. And he's supposed to feel safe and welcomed right no matter what his political beliefs are this is what this paragraph says so he what happened he expressed his political belief and they took his money they suspended him for 12 months and how does that supposed to make him feel welcome right (laughs) (laughs) it just it just makes no sense it's like well we're we're adamant about no matter what your political views that you feel safe and welcome unless you actually have political views in which case we're going to make sure that you don't feel very safe at all and that you're certainly not welcome back (laughs) right (laughs) not only not only you're not welcome back We've made it very clear exactly who you are and amplified it to as many people who will hear as possible in the country that might be hostile to you. Have fun yeah, going good, home. Good luck on your pending arrest and disappearance. You know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, at, at Blizzard, we are always listening and finding ways to improve. It's part of our culture. Thank you for your patience with us as we continue to learn. 
Sincerely, J. Allen Brack, president of Blizzard Entertainment. So are you suggesting that maybe J. Allen didn't write this statement personally? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, he totally talks like that every day. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, yeah, it's um, this has been a wild situation to watch, mainly in, in my opinion, the the things that blow me away are again when i when i when i talked about it with my audience who is kind of uh you know they know my positions on speech and stuff like that that i i would not be ever in favor of this censorship even from a private company i i think political speech has as a place and um and and to see something somebody censored in this way bothers me dramatically but to have people say you know to go from this is nothing china china really or blizzard really didn't do anything wrong here the guy shouldn't have said that stuff uh yada 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 he should be suspended to within a couple days that being the extreme minority of what you're seeing at least online i mean we're talking from major publications too right like we're, uh it's not like there's a vox.com article saying blizzard and china were right you know there's not some mm -hmm. weirdo weirdo journalists taking up the the cause of the chinese government no it's oh. you, i've been i've been giving interviews to uh left wing and right wing press and they're all condemning this right so it's uh that's amazing it's amazingly unifying and that's refreshing that we still at least believe in something <laughs> a little bit Thank you for uniting us, Blizzard. <laughs> yeah, in 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 condemning you as the worst gaming company of 2019. <laughs> you know, in 2019, bridging the left and the right is one of the most Herculean tasks uh, imaginable, and Blizzard has done a, a a remarkable. They've made a remarkable effort at it. Um, <laughs> we should commend they, them for it. They they've put b not just their best foot forward in this matter, but both feet in their mouth. <laughs> yeah. Uh is uh do you have time to answer some questions from the chat? Well, I do, but I just sent you the actual rule that they're citing that they suspended Ooh. Them for. Ooh. And yeah. I want your opinion on this. Okay, let me pull that up. Uh hold on. I'm going to get it I'm going to get it on screen here so we can Share it again. Okay. Okay, and uh, that should be relative. I'll zoom it in a little. There we go. Mm -hmm. Okay, upon further review, we have found the action has violated the 2019 Hearthstone Grandmaster's Official Competition Rules Section 6.10 and is individual behavior which does not represent blizzard or hearthstone esports 6.10 is found below so this is on page 12 page 12 of the competition rules that i'm sure everybody reads every word of <laughs> engaging in any act that in blizzard's sole discretion those that's it that's all you need of this rule frankly um, just period after that right? <laughs> just stop <laughs> brings you into public disrepute offends a portion or group of the public so literally anybody or otherwise damages blizzard image will result in removal from grandmasters and reduction of players prize total to zero us dollars in addition to other remedies which may be provided for under the handbook and blizzard's website terms so look the the, the key <laughs> here is public disrepute a portion a group of the public the only offended party here is the communist uh, government of china that's not the public no i i think actually uh the the like tenement farmer community in china is also offended by the notion that hong kong would be free um <laughs> I'm, I'm making that up obviously <laughs> uh like, but but it's silly right outside outside of chinese government um i i can't imagine maybe i'm wrong but is it 
Okay. Is well, there let's any... pick this apart. Uh, uh, okay. First of all, you, for, for people who, who don't get the joke of the first segment that we're laughing at is because these sort of, in these legal agreements, they have these universal sayings that any, you know, there's, there's some clauses that are like from now till eternity, till the end of the heat death of the universe, right? And this right. is the type of language you're looking at here when they say, engaging in, an act, in any act that in Blizzard Soul discretion, you could just put a period right there and that just means anything that we don't like (laughs) and it it says something that's a real problem with these types of agreements the agree so the the idea of a contract even an adhesion contract where you um you are by participation uh, uh you are agreeing to the rules an end user license agreement where you can't go in and negotiate right like you can't strike out lines of the end user license agreement send it back to the company and have them accept it you can actually do that on your liability waivers like if you go to a uh, a mud run or something just line out the personal injury stuff where you waive any liability for personal injury just line it out and hand it back to them after you sign it nine times out of ten the person will take it and say oh okay cool you just you signed the document and i'm uh, a volunteer so i don't care so you can actually preserve your right to a personal injury lawsuit in these sort of events with with relative frequency. I know I do it all the time. Um, but but this is a, a weird thing where you because it's online typically or because you're you know, you're just getting a, a PDF of the document. You don't get to line it out and send it back for their approval. You're bound to this thing. But this line specifically says you're bound. We're not. We're bound to whatever we choose, but you're bound also to whatever we choose. There is no promise here, and that's a real problem that is pervasive in these types of agreements. And uh, unfortunately, U.S. courts have just not been willing to take it on and say, this is ridiculous. Uh, but but sorry, I'm ranting on my own personal issue. I hate these contracts of <laughs> adhesion so much, and they need to they need to be changed. Okay, so let me ask you this. You know, the next the next uh, part of the sentence here is uh, anything that brings you into public disrepute. Do you think he brought that that Blitzchung brought himself into public disrepute? Well, let's see. Let's uh, let's look for. I'm on the Cambridge Dictionary. We're gonna go to public, right? Because this is how. Uh, without uh, when we're when we're breaking down a legal document without a specifically defined term in the legal document, we refer to the general definition definitions that exist. Uh, so public is relating to or involving people in general rather than being limited to a particular group of people. OK, so pretty interesting. That's that's public is an adjective uh, of the Cambridge Dictionary. Um, and, and that includes public opinion, public awareness, public support and the results won't be made public. So that's people in general, not limited to a particular group of people uh, is the definition of public. So what's well, disrepute? The Sorry. intent the intent of this is they don't want a Hearthstone player to overnight, after winning the Grandmaster Tournament, turn around and star in a porn film. Right. That's what they mean by this, right? Right. And this well, and the, is not... This is what it's intended to guard against, and and this is it, 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 this is he has not tarnished his reputation at all with the public. But the, and the, and that's my point is that they're using this definition, uh, public disrepute. Disrepute just means a state of not being respected or trusted. But um, what they're you're correct on the intent. The intent is that the person will not engage in behavior that will make a general public audience of normal uh, uh, not just a general public the general public audience your saturday night newscast this guy comes on and says free hong kong does does the general public think that this guy is somehow bad or terrible now your saturday night newscast this guy comes on and while he's on air kicks a dog uh, through some football uprights everybody hates this guy immediately Right. There's a very big difference between these two events. And uh, now uh, what's funny is that Blizzard picks public disrepute and then goes on to try and suggest that it's a portion of the, offending a portion of the public. And that's not what they're what they're doing here. That's not what he he didn't 
first of all, I don't think he offended any portion of the public, but they're also trying to limit it to a very, very narrow selection of whatever the public may be in the Chinese government. I guess technically, if there is one person offended, <laughs> then, then then you're out. That's a portion of the public right there. One person. <laughs> okay. All right. So maybe, you know, I, I suppose they could trot somebody out. So, you know, I, think these... they'd, I think they'd have real trouble finding um, a non-political party to be offended by the statement at all. Uh, yeah. and, and as a reminder, the statement was free Hong Kong. Right. Free Hong Kong. This wasn't, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, Chinese are massacring Hong Kong people in the streets or something like that. Right. Yeah. This was just free Hong Kong. So, you know, it, it, did he offend a portion, a group of the public? That's really a reach. Like we're we're reaching, right? We're like, well, there's got to be someone, but we're having trouble imagining who that is. But we know for certain the government was offended, but the government isn't the public. Yeah, I would find a very, I, I would find it very interesting. Um, now, I think a court would just defer because of the the uh, the <laughs> main language of Blizzard's sole discretion. Like, obviously, this guy isn't going to win a breach of contract claim against them. Mm. Especially, yes, uh, uh, but this is a a real reach to oh, to, yeah. to, to yeah. use this clause to justify Blizzard's actions, which they are claiming is still valid to use this clause, is an is a huge reach. Yeah, I agree fully that it's a massive reach. And what I'm saying is, I think it would be funny to watch them try and justify it. Right? Like, is it, okay, show the public, provide evidence that the public was offended. And like, <laughs> they, they get some, some poor guy who's like, uh, you know, been forced by the Chinese government to sign some affidavit and submit it to a U.S. court. <laughs> like, oh, uh, oh, that's what they God. would have to do. They would, they would have to, they, they, yes. Yeah. <laughs> They'd have to go find some poor guy in China that, that the government's going to lean on to to kind of appear in a US court to say that I was offended. <laughs> yeah. Some some guy with like a small restaurant like look your restaurant license is toast if you don't do this. Uh it, it it's just crazy. Um to see them yeah how they would justify this is is ridiculous. But uh yeah, so Okay, so, uh, okay go ahead. Yeah. Let's go. Oh, you were about to read it. Let's hear it. Oh, uh, so or otherwise damages Blizzard's image. Um, so that and again, who thought Blizzard's image was damaged by this? Actually, the, it, 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 he he didn't damage Blizzard's image. Blizzard damaged Blizzard's image. They Blizzard's have to, banned from Hearthstone. <laughs> yeah, they have to remove themselves and take away all their money. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Blizzard damaged their own image. They violated their own clause. <laughs> and the really funny thing about that is, and again, uh, uh, understanding for the audience that this would never go to court, but if it did, the lawyers for uh, Blitzchung would point out, they would bring up the articles about Blizzard's stock dip. They would. They would say, no, Blizzard damaged their image way more than this guy did. Their interaction or their activity is a is a superseding and intervening act that uh, eliminated any proximate cause that his actions would have had that would incur any sort of liability. They overrode it. We will never know if his if his statement would have somehow negatively impacted Blizzard. What we do know is Blizzard's actions that followed absolutely did. And we can show it here, here and here. Look at all of these experts and they could trot out tons of experts to show that this had a direct and proximate impact on Blizzard's financials. It would, I wish something like this would go to court just because it would be so funny uh, yeah. to, to see the lunacy of these types of uh, agreements and how, they, how they're applied. Because a good lawyer would make a mockery of them and just point out what they did was so stupid over and over. Even if they ultimately lost they would be pointing it out for the entire public to see what blizzard did here was dumb 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 oh my god <laughs> here's the thing they didn't have a clause ready to handle political statements not at they, all that's why they grabbed this one off the shelf 
and and sort of like tried to shove the round peg into the square hole so hard here in order to get this guy. And, uh, you know, but uh, believe you me, the uh, next contract, you know, probably already drafted and ready for, you know, Jay Allen Brack's approval has the clause in it for against political speech, but it is not here. It is not directly here. And so this, in my opinion, is a total overreach. And, uh, you know, and except for the fact that U.S. courts have upheld this language in the, in the beginning that, that you pointed out, except for that fact, I, I think that this, this just shows he didn't violate anything. But No, and I, I, don't, I don't think anybody would reasonably argue that he violated any provision that he could have anticipated violating uh, by his argument. He, he knew his, his statement would make an impact. I have a strong suspicion. How did they word that? Um, let's this see. would have, if Blizzard had gone the other way and actually, you know, uh, endorsed his message, it would have actually improved Blizzard's image. Because to stand up to China, to have balls that big, that would that would have actually improved their image. So what they did was the opposite. See, he says, oh, excuse me. I understand that my act could take the conversation away from the purpose of the event. Yeah, they keep bringing that up. The Blizzard statement says uh, it was a violation to bring the conversation away from the purpose of the event. Where is that language? It's yeah, nowhere in there. That's not in the rule. And that's that's one of those. Uh, it's something that we see fairly often. The use of one apology to confer an apology or an acknowledgement of some other act, right? Uh, I apologize for offending you is the same as I apologize for punching you in the face. Um, when you when you say you didn't punch them in the face and they say they did, right? Oh, uh, I apologize if anybody was offended by my actions. And they say, aha, aha, the act of punching me in the face, which he said was false up until now, he's apologizing for because it, it offended me, so therefore he did it. Blizzard's doing mm-hmm. the same weird thing here where they say, look, he acknowledged he acknowledged that uh, his act would stray from the conversation. That doesn't mean his he's acknowledging that his act would bring him into public disrepute or offend anybody or damage Blizzard. That's those are very, very different things. It's but- very simple. They're saying that he violated the it, it, they're saying that he violated the rules in, in the latest Blizzard statement, right? And his yep. own personal statement. They're saying the reason he should be punished is because he drew conversation away from the game. But when you look at the actual agreement, that's not what it says. That is not what it says. Right. They're pulling that out of thin air. Yep. And uh, it's it's... Because they know this clause doesn't fit. Because they tried it. They threw it out there in the beginning and it didn't stick with anybody. This And this clause is, uh, to be very clear to people, this clause is in there for this purpose. Look, this is our catch-all. This is our mm-hmm. catch-all uh, when we don't have a rule for something we don't like. This is our last uh, thing to say. Well, you violated this, though. Because this could be anything. You could say, I like mac and cheese and be like, oh, that offends lactose intolerant people. How do we do this? How how dare you? Right. I mean, very seriously, if somehow like let's let's say Kraft had done something Mm -hmm. like Kraft had tweeted out a bunch of swastikas the day before. And you say, oh, I really like mac and cheese. And like someone says someone goes on Twitter. So uh, this company endorses uh, Kraft's Nazi position. And then uh, they could just go. They're like, no one could have anticipated that those events would have happened. But they could say, look, uh, his endorsement of, you know, craft the lactose intolerance, man. <laughs> <laughs> the flatulence is real. It is. It is. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, um, I, I do have a couple uh, people who have sent you specific questions uh, if we could, if we could go through those, sure, um, that would be great. Okay, let that me. That was fun. Thank you for enter- entertaining me with that one. Yeah, no problem. It's it's. Thank you for coming on. Of course, uh, 
I gotta, I gotta have you on more. I love talking to you. Um, also, uh, do you, is so you're still, are you still on your, your Ember project or? I am. Yeah. Okay. It's, Cause I've got a bunch of people asking me about the status of that. So I wanted to kind of get some information, um, okay. about that and, and, you know, let people know where they can find it and what they can do to support it and all of that stuff. Because, uh, like, like you said, you are, you are literally turning away, uh, future business in the Chinese market by taking an open and active stance against, against the Chinese government and against what Blizzard has done. So let's, uh, let's make sure, um, non-Chinese markets know how to support you in the work that you're doing. Sure. And I, I appreciate it because normally I, I, on these podcasts and streams, I, I shy away from mentioning the project. I was on the quartering and he, he dragged it out of me multiple times and he, would say, <laughs> and he would say, I know Mark never likes to talk about his project on, because I feel that the topics we talk about are more important. Right. right. And, but, and, and, but I, but I, oblige Jeremy and myself the at the stream and, and, and I'm going to do it here too because this is costing me the, taking this stance uh, and speaking out against China and speaking out against uh, and even Blizzard like you know uh, big publishers see that in the United States and go well this guy's you know a hot potato uh, this affects not just our ability to sell in China, because we'll never be able to get a license to operate in China now. Uh, I can't travel there anymore. Uh, th I can't find investors, and China is one of the largest source of investors in media and entertainment uh, from China anymore. This is literally costing millions of dollars. So I depend on the public now. I, de I depend on gamers to support projects that they're passionate about. And so that's the only reason I'm going to bring it up today. So I am making a new MMO. It's a it's a mech versus kaiju MMO. It plays like a shooter. If you can imagine what Planet Side would feel like, for those of you who remember, uh, hundreds of people running around in uh, in in tanks and planes and things like this. Except in our case, it's it's mecha mech suits, exosuits, these sort of powered exoskeletons, uh, going up against giant monsters like in uh, Monster Hunter or Pacific Rim or that type of thing. So that's the setting. It's on a fictional planet, and it's a dynamic battle between the players who are all on one side versus a really tough AI game master that's running the invasions on the other side. And you're trying to terraform the planet, open it up zone by zone uh, into, in, into a human biome from its frozen wasteland, and they're trying to tear it down. And this battle goes back and forth, and it's very much like it's got vibes from like Attack from uh, on Titan uh, because you're, you're in small exosuits fighting against giant creatures. Uh, and it's got vibes of planet side, and it's got vibes of Monster Hunter. Everything in the world is crafted you craft stuff you build bases and it's it's not like a theme park world it's not like world of warcraft where we have like a bunch of fixed quests this is a dynamic sort of war system that plays out over time and players get to expand this world and um what we did was we went ahead and uh, people asked me to do this game because of a prior game I did called Firefall because they missed that game a lot when it was in beta. And this was, um, it had a game, there was like jetpacks and glider wings, and we put all of that into this game as well. So there's a lot of free movement. So we do, ex we're preparing for a Kickstarter. It hasn't occurred yet. We're and because we're building a playable mock-up, something that you can actually take one of the encounters in the game and play through to get an idea of how it works. And it's very action-oriented. We're not talking about tab targeting. We, in order to do that, we have taken pre-funding up until that point from fans who want to see this happen, who actually petitioned me to make it happen. And you can go to our website, em8er.com, to see a little bit of the concept art and some of the screenshots of the st of the art from the game that we're building, and just sign up. I'm not even asking anyone to buy anything. What I'm trying to do is saying, watch our project. Support us just by signing up for a free account on em80r.com, and it's pronounced Ember. It, the the reason it's em80r is because that's the astronomical, uh, do not, you know, name of the planet. Sort of sure. like stars numbers and letters and things like that so you know i'm just asking that people sign up so that when we do have the kickstarter and we do have a demo to show you guys um and 
you can make your decision then, you know, but we just want to get the word out and we really need to get the word out now because we are saying no to China influence. We're saying we do not want to censor our game for China. We don't want them telling our players what they can and can't say. Uh, what Blizzard did was wrong. And that has a real cost to our studio to take that sort of stand. But I think it's one we need to make because we can see this. We can see what's happening with China uh, influence in the NBA, uh, in our tech companies, in our movies being censored for China. And to me, enough is enough. And so in order to take that stand, I can't do it without you guys. Again, you don't have to spend a dime. Just sign up to our mailing list. We're trying to reach 20,000 on our mailing list. We have 15,000 now. And uh, when the Kickstarter comes out, judge for yourself. Now, if you would like to become a backer, there's two ways to do it. You can uh, either join our subscription program, which is like a $7.95 monthly thing, or you can buy a newcomer pack, which entitles you to final copies of the game. And both of these give you access to our work in progress builds. The other thing that I really believe in is transparency. So we, we, um, we ship builds to our backers about every three weeks, and we show you how the sausage is made. This is not final art. Uh, this is not final gameplay. This is work in progress, but you can actually see how we make it awesome and i've uh my my mod tilip is is putting the link out in the chat it's also uh at the top of the description now um you should see if you if you check your browser uh the link to em8r 8er.com is em8er.com is up in the description so you can go click on it there and go right to it follow it make sure you support uh, a good guy making a game that sounds pretty cool um and uh you know max man i know i i grew up on max why you do this to me if you like <laughs> anime, if you like anime if you like mecca and if you like uh, movies like pacific rim uh, or if you enjoy games like monster hunter or planet side this is your bag so uh you have to do something for me when when you actually open up a kickstarter like legitimate uh, not just like we're going to ask backers who are really committed, but we're going to go ahead and put this out to the broader public and do a Kickstarter. You got to come mm -hmm. on and shill the living hell out of it. Because uh, <laughs> well, we'll play it together. How about that? Oh, man, I would love that. I would love that. We could we'll play, play it, the demo together. Yeah, right on stream. That'd be perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I think we should definitely do that. Uh, it's it's a It's a game that I know lots of people who would like that. And uh, a lot of my audience is a big fan of anime. Uh, so there's at least a few mecha weebs out there who would love <laughs> who would love it. And I'm also hearing there, there are attractive ladies involved oh, in this yes, game, we, too. And men. We have waifus and husbandos for the weebs out there. So I've I, always wanted to make a game with waifus and husbandos. So this is this is probably the only chance I'll get. <laughs> don't you don't you know that waifus are, are offensive? How dare you? Good, sir. <laughs> but why I, I get a pass i grew up in japan too where didn't you grow up that's the real question the hard-hitting questions from our current I, I, I grew up in eight different countries so really yeah my dad was uh my dad was military so we oh we okay See, place. yeah you bounced around then that's yep. uh that's crazy i can't uh i can't imagine i grew up only in in two uh, Houston, Texas, and then, um, you know, the suburbs of Minneapolis, which are vastly different areas. <laughs> uh, wait, wait a second. With that statement, did you offend a portion or group of the public or otherwise? <laughs> only, <bring> any... <laughs> only, only the, the slightly terrible people of Burnsville, Minnesota, which is <laughs> not where I grew up, but, uh, you know, they're, they were close, but they're, you know, never mind. Uh, no, <laughs> of course, of course I did. Uh, pretty much everything I say these days offends <laughs> a, a group of the public, even if it's innocuous. I've learned that. Well, um, you're never going to play in a Hearthstone tournament. <laughs> I, I, I would, I kind of wonder, um, not, not Hearthstone. Cause I, er, you got me saying Hearthstone. <laughs> I do. Yeah. It's, uh, hey, it's canon. It's canon. I, I probably, I'm not a big uh card gamer or anything like that because mainly because i'm bad at it but uh like i try to play the warhammer mobile card game and i just get repeatedly stomped into the dirt until i'm crying and so i just stop but um 
but no, like uh, comic conventions and, and anime conventions that I may actually want to go to. I don't I, I legitimately wonder if I can even show up at some of them. I have to check in advance to make sure that when I do show up there, I won't be turned away at the door after buying a ticket uh, because, you know, I have I have strong opinions in these fields. Uh, no, that's and, like that'd be like me trying to visit China now. Right. Or or like less less controversially like E3 or something. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's it's a weird it's a weird world that that having opinions on things uh, is is enough to get you banned from places. Um, yeah, it's 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 gotten pretty crazy. And that's why we have clauses like this in the Blizzard contract. And for you, that place is a geographical monstrosity, right? Like there goes your chance to climb Everest or whatever. Actually, that's yeah, in, is that in China or is that in Nepal? I don't even know. Oh, um, Everest is in is in Nepal. Yeah. Okay, so you could still do that. I could still <laughs> do that. I could still yeah. <laughs> but but yeah, I, I I have given up a large portion of the world that I've spent a, a lot of time in. That um, you know, and uh, that yeah, I was born in Taiwan, so my passport says born in China because the U.S. doesn't officially recognize Taiwan, and uh, that was. But I was done, you know, and and we didn't talk about some of the other stuff that went on that makes me feel so strongly. You know, there are my 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 ethnic ties, and the fact that I, that I uh, lived in Hong Kong, but it, every other thing that I've seen. I think we are at a really dangerous point where China influences too much of our business. We depend on the markets too much. We depend on the easy capital from China too much. And it is starting. It used to just be like, oh, just change a skeleton here and change a movie line there and don't make the monk and Doctor Strange Tibetan, you know, and, and now we are silencing players. And and not just silencing them, taking money from them. Right. You know, we're taking money from them. We're banning them. We're ostracizing them for China because of the strength of the market there, because of the potential for profit there. I I personally reached a point in my life where I said I can't do that anymore. I can't if if they're going to stretch this far, if they're going to start putting their foot down this heavily onto our values as Americans, I cannot in good conscience continue to support a system which I know is by the way immensely corrupt. You know, the, the 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 business in China is full of kickbacks and bribes and everything else, and I just can't do it anymore. So for me, it was an, a moral imperative to 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 say something about this and to step out at this time. Right. Yeah. The, I mean, the uh, it's it that's an it's an interesting sort of uh, conundrum that people have. Uh, what whatever you think of of Trump as a president. Um, and the wisdom of, of say, a trade war, it is something that he's been talking about the the Chinese influence since before his election, right? He's been talking about the dangers of the influences of China and uh, the the real possibility of of the U.S. taking a stand and fighting back against them. And in some ways we have, and in some ways we haven't. Obviously, uh, I'm not I'm not particularly endorsing a particular political position of his but it's it's something that um i think his detractors specifically have to try and reconcile that uh that there there are voices who have been out there saying this which um you know several years ago uh what you said just now several years ago would have come out of the mouth of a of a right-wing radio pundit right and would have been largely condemned uh as being nonsensical yet here we are like China. Now, China has been emboldened over the past couple of years. They're not they're not rolling back their exertion of control. They're expanding it into into more personal uh, places than just, well, we we want we want to buy influence over this business, which is what they were doing to now. We've bought the influence over this business. Now we want to start influencing uh, private individuals all over the world through that influence. It is uh, an extension of China's policy into the world. Now, 
10 years ago, 10, 12 years ago, China was nowhere in games in the United States. Mm -hmm. Now, now they are the, they're in everything. They own 40% of Epic games. They own a hundred percent of Riot games, the maker of League of Legends. Uh, They own, they own every, their their fingers are everywhere. They own Tencent, right? uh, Well, you know, Tencent is, is the largest social media and gaming company in China, and they are closely allied with China and designing the social credit system score there. And sure. Tencent is everywhere in U.S. gaming. So we've gone from a point where I've, I've watched this happen where China was nowhere to be seen in our entertainment, and now they are the dominant force of funding and one of the biggest, not just one of the biggest markets, but also the biggest sources of funding for games and for movies. So this is this is a big deal because um you know uh because it's no longer just about changing the skeletons in world of warcraft so that they don't offend china we're talking about um you know hitting players with ten thousand dollar fines basically uh or more than that taking away all their money all their prize money uh because they held up a sign that said free hong kong which has nothing to do with games this so, uh this skeleton story sounds pretty specific. Oh yeah, yeah. Is this and a public we, is this a public thing that I have no idea about? Yeah, it's, it's it's well, I don't know how much of the the US public knows, but in in World of Warcraft um you know, uh w- there are skeletons in the game like objects and and of course there are exposed bones in the un- in the undead race, right? right. Uh, in the characters that you create. And so we had to cover those up in the player characters, and we had to remove skeletons from the game uh, in order to be licensed to operate in China. And Why? <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> they just, they're just racist against skeletons? <laughs> I guess, or it's just too violent somehow. Or they don't like any... anorexia or something? Or I, I have no idea. But... Uh, but yeah, that was, it was like, oh, not a big deal. We'll we'll take the skeletons out. And now it's like, well, thanks for taking the skeletons out. Hey, there's this guy that said something we don't like. Can you go (laughs) hit him with like a big sledgehammer right now? And Blizzard goes, how high, how hard should we hit him? It's like, oh, give him the works. You know, (laughs) that's what happened here. And that's, that's what, that's what prompted me to say enough is enough. You know? Right. Right. And, and, and it was between that and the NBA and Apple. It was just too much. It was just too much for me. Well, I'm glad you are because, uh, we, it's as weird as it is, you know, the, there was the, the buy American movement of, of a couple years ago is probably going to morph into buy integrity, right? Like it's, it's, uh, mm-hmm. It's about buying products and supporting creators with integrity who have who have a, an open an overt system of values that you can see, you can measure and you can respect that aren't couched in the language of uh, anything that we determine to be damaging to us ever. Uh, you can't do and you won't know what it was until we decide that it happened type thing. Um, we've got to have the ability. People need to have the ability to buy a product in good faith, especially as we're moving away from product ownership and into digital licensing agreements um, where we have, I mean, heck, we have digital licensing agreements in tractors and and it's coming in cars. Like you're not going to own the car you, uh, mm-hmm. you drive any more soon. You're going to pay a licensing agreement for the software that's in your car that will drive you. And if you violate their terms of service, you won't have a car. Like that's that's the reality. And if you don't think that's coming, look at John Deere. If you violate John Deere's terms of service, your tractor that you your quarter million dollar combine planter harvester doesn't work anymore because you violated their TOS. And they'll have uh, a clause like this. If you bring uh, uh, who makes the tractor again? John Deere. If you make John Deere, you know, <clears throat> if you bring them into public disrespute or offend, offend a portion of group of the public or otherwise damage John Deere's image in any way, your tractor will stop working. <laughs> yeah. And that's that's coming. Um, I, I've I've been talking about this for a, 
uh, about a year now, but that's that's coming to every aspect of our lives. And I don't think people are ready for it and they don't believe me. Um, they believe that cash or crypto will prevent this stuff. And it's not it's not about the currency you use. It's not about the method of payment that you use. It's about the fact that the person you're transacting with has a license agreement with someone else that you will be offending their licensing agreement. It won't matter if you're paying with cash. It won't matter if you're paying with Bitcoin. All that will matter is the fact that you go into that grocery store and you have some form of social credit score, whether or not it's uh, it's in front of you or whether or not it's something that's maintained on a private database that you don't have easy access to. Uh, it'll either be overt like it is in China or it'll be behind the scenes uh, maintained by MasterCard and Visa or whoever. And um, and you won't be able to engage in commerce or engage in mundane activities because everything will be a license agreement at some point. So if yep. we don't stop it in video games, you won't be stopping it in cars or buses or whatever thing you think you're going to do to get around the problem. It's going to pervade everything because everything will be software soon or will be run by software. Your fridge what if you violate the terms of service of Samsung and your fridge stops cooling your milk? I mean, it's not even a joke, right? Like this is coming. I don't. I don't think people see it, but uh, I definitely see it. It, it, it. I'm with you. This is this is going to be. Look, uh, we have we have nests in our homes. We've got you know Alexa. We've got doorbells run by Amazon, and they're all governed by terms of service and and user license agreements. What about your and, biometric thumb? You know your biometric door lock mm -hmm. on your on your house. You don't need your key, right? You just put your thumb up, or you you scan your phone or whatever, and your house unlocks. What if you violate the TOS on the biometric company? <laughs> Like you can't unlock your laptop. You can't unlock your iPhone. You can't unlock any uh, a, a third party biometrics database with a license agreement that you violate by saying free Hong Kong, for example, because it's it's owned by a Chinese company. And then suddenly you can't open any device you own and you can't get into your own home. Like that's that's 20 years away. I don't think people uh, anyway, I'm this um, is this is the vodka talking now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and for the record, uh, let me violate Beats' uh, terms of service. This stuff sucks. <laughs> I'm not a, I'm not a fan. Vodka should taste almost. It should have very little to to no taste. And this is, this is a strong uh, flavor that's probably coming from the sugar beet itself. I'm not a big fan. So if your whole life is governed by corporate and user license agreements. That's that supersedes state and federal law, you know, uh, you know, but it's OK because it's a corporation, not the government doing it to you. I mean, this is basically you're surrendering the apparatus of government to corporations who are only beholden to shareholders who are unelected representatives who do not have your best interest at heart, who will put profit over human rights, as we've seen with the Blizzard case. Um, <clears throat> that's where we kind of are headed now. It's happening mm -hmm. right now. And it's only going to get worse. I mean, I can't believe that we've gone from skeletons to taking $10,000 away from somebody. You know, it's, and it's that's, crazy. It's what, a decade? Uh, a de just a decade. You know, well, a little, I, little I over my, 13 years, yeah. 14 years. I no, remember actually, I was in un year anniversary, but but still, yeah, yeah. But the China influence, I would say, really started about 10 years ago. I was uh, I was in undergrad when WoW came out, so I wasn't I wasn't sure when the skeletons went away. Uh, oh, yeah, that would be probably uh, six months after WoW shipped. So we're talking about 2003 or 2005. Something. OK, mm -hmm. there you go. <clears throat> Yeah, wild. Okay, let's get to those questions I keep referencing. Sorry. Um, uh, Felipe Muve says, Hey, Nick, it seems you don't like the vodka. No, it's it's really not good. Uh, I, I think I made a I think I made a face on the first sip. I was like, no, it's not. I like Tito's, man. Tito's I've made a terrible, terrible mistake. <laughs> well, I knew what I was getting into. I was like, oh, I'm going to buy a craft vodka. This is going to be garbage. Uh, I found out 
uh, or I found about the 750 milliliter bottle costing 45 US dollars. So thanks for drinking it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, we've got Lane K says, if half of Cong Congress wasn't busy investigating non-crimes, wouldn't they be able to look into the NBA stopping political speech? Plus, Mark, it's good to hear of game developers who admit they mispronounce words in their game rather than the players. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, do you have any, you don't have to share them on here if you don't want to, but do you have any opinions that you would like to share about the ongoing issues, but the, the conflict between the legislative and the executive branch that's going on right now? I find it fascinating. You know, I haven't, <clears throat> excuse me, I haven't actually actively followed it because I've been buried in this stuff, but I guess a lot of stuff is happening with the, what, what impeachment stuff and... Yeah, so uh, the, a high-level overview, and this is the reason I'm going to leave it at a high-level overview is because I think it's a basic question, and it's not an answered question. I want to be very clear on that. You can have all sorts of opinions on this, but this is an unanswered question by the Supreme Court, is um, if Congress thinks they want to impeach a president, can they initiate an investigation that would allow otherwise privileged executive documents to be disclosed to Congress? without a formal act of Congress. Uh, Isn't so the, that just a unlimited discovery fishing expedition? It kind of sounds like it, right? Uh, the, the context being President Trump's uh, phone call to the Ukrainian prime minister or president, whatever, whatever he is. Uh, so you have two heads of state, the executive branch being the sole organ of, of foreign affairs. Uh, you have Congress suggesting that there's something in that phone call that was improper, the executive refusing to turn over the transcript of the phone call, and Congress saying, we're going to subpoena it. We're not going to make a resolution to investigate the president for impeachment, because I think they have doubts about passing it, or at least putting putting Democrat uh, congressmen up for re-election in danger of signing their name to something, right? Like, that's the reality there. Um, they're They're attempting to investigate without doing a resolution uh, going for the investigation. But in my, my issue on this from a legal perspective is that the constitutional authority to impeach is such a limited amount of language. It's, it's like a sentence, right? It's, it hmm. basically says uh, impeachment for high crime, or a president should be tried by impeachment for high crimes and misdemeanors um, through a, uh, a, an act brought by the House of Representatives, it should be tried by the Senate and overheard by the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. And that's it. That like that's all of the all of the articles of impeachment language in the Constitution. And they're they're okay. like drawing. I remember that. Yeah, they're like drawing <laughs> out of it these powers to conduct investigations and to subpoena documents. It's like, wait a minute. I think constitutionally you have to draft articles of impeachment put them before the house vote on it and then you have your investigation. Well, that is an interesting point of civil procedure, isn't it? Yeah, and we we don't know because only only like two presidents have ever actually been impeached, Clinton and uh and somebody else a long time ago. The other people either were threatened to be impeached but weren't. Uh Nixon was about to be impeached but he resigned. Um, so we don't know, right? The courts haven't weighed in on this and we don't have the rules on it, but I didn't know if you had any, any perspective or, you know, I know you are you're a law of some sort, uh, you have a legal education and, uh, yeah, my memory of constitutional law is pretty dim, but to me, uh, just intuitively based off of, you know, everything that I've experienced, it, that seems wrong to me that you can go ahead and, and, and launch an investigation before you've uh, filed articles of impeachment. Instinctively, which uh, obviously is not a legal opinion, uh, that seems wrong to me. That's Yeah, and, and I, think, uh, I think it's okay to have either opinion on this because the, the ultimate answer we're going to get down to is the Supreme Court will have to answer this question. Um, and we've got a, we've got a weird thing where the, um, Congress there, is, oh, go ahead. Isn't there enough paralysis in government? Do, are we going to really legitimize, you know, these 
basically weapons of mass political destruction, uh, which will be utilized by both sides for generations to come. So we will get absolutely nothing done in this country. Is that a wise move? I mean, the next the next Democrat president with a Republican majority Congress is going to do the same thing if this goes forward. I mean, they just will. Yep. Uh, and if if you don't believe me, look at how the Republican Senate has already promised to do the opposite of what it did on Supreme Court nominations. If if uh, Ginsburg is to actually admit to, that she's been dead for a long time. <laughs> That's a joke. That's a joke. That's a joke. Uh, but uh, yeah, the, the, if one of the justices kicks off, Mick McC Mitch McConnell has already said, we'll appoint someone right away before the election. Of course we will. Even though when when Obama was president, um, they they said no, they would hold off and do that because that's the power of the Senate to do it. Uh, and and then, of course, so we have an immediate flip flop. If we don't think that a Republican House is going to impeach the next Democrat president, if they find that this impeachment is valuable in getting rid of Trump, at least in the election, even if they don't succeed in the impeachment, but if they think it's damaging enough to his reputation, it gets rid of him. It's going to be used. Because why yeah. wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they? And, th and that's why I feel so sad for this 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 political infighting is because they're willing to go so far, and it, it, and and when it flips over, it's just going to happen all over again on the on the other side, and you will introduce. It'll be impossible to govern. It'll be impossible for the president of the United States to have a conversation with any foreign country. It'll be impossible to pass any law because you're too busy impeaching each other. You know, it's going to be crazy. Right. It's and, already crazy. And any presidential conversation that does take place with a head of state will have a team of lawyers, a team of lawyers sitting there, White House counsel just feeding him lines, and it'll be a worthless discussion. I mean, the, the whole point is is to allow the president to have candor with another head of state, to talk to them as a person and uh, as someone who's similarly situated. That's the idea that we don't we're not going to take that phone call and say, oh, the president used this particular phrase or this thing was offensive and uh, and make it a political weapon. So it's 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 uh, very unfortunate, in my opinion. But anyway, yeah, uh, yeah it's crazy. Brian Duig says American college students held up a Hong Kong sign and Blizzard did nothing. So they resigned in response to their hypocrisy at not banning them. Yeah, they Blizzard said, hey, we're not going to ban you. It's OK. You can you can you can you can. I don't know if they won or if they they can continue to compete. And they said, nope, we forfeit. We forfeit because we don't believe in double standards. They, they took a stand. So, good so this them. was after the other event. Yes, this is after the other event. So after after what happened with Blitzchung, um, the you know American University was competing, and the players held up the sign that said "Free Hong Kong, Boycott Blizzard," and Blizzard just not even a slap on the wrist. Just uh, they they did cut away on the stream, but there was no penalty, and yet they're saying here that it was appropriate that. Uh, Blitz Chung get uh, get you know not twelve months, but it was more appropriate that it got six. <laughs> it, it was appropriate that he got twelve, but it's more appropriate that he gets six. <laughs> you know the real the real test, right, is to have someone to have a major player in a major tournament say Hong Kong needs to be Chinese or something like that. To have some huge overtly political statement in the opposite opposite direction and force Blizzard to punish them. God, wouldn't yep. that be wouldn't that be just juicy as all get up and watch Blizzard like run and apologize to China as hard as they possibly can? Say we had to do this because of the other event. You have to well, understand. Please don't ban us. <laughs> aren't they in an impossible situation? Because that could happen. Right. It, sh it not only could happen. It should happen. Yeah, someone it, should test it. Someone should I'm, I'm, should do it. I don't know who should do it because at the same time that person then has to has to put their own personal relation or reputation on the line and say this thing. But uh there's got to be like a Chinese Blizzard player, right? But they wouldn't do it. The Chinese government might actually stop them from doing that. 
because of yeah. that. So, gosh, who would you do it? Anyway, uh, Stephen Frost says, did you see the article about SpongeBob being a racist colonizer? I did not. Did you happen to see no. that? <laughs> I know of no no racist colonizer worth, worse than SpongeBob. Forget Cortez. SpongeBob did it. Uh, Intimidator0108 says, how's it going, Nick? About to stream some Resident Evil 2 remake on Twitch in honor of October and Halloween. Looking forward to tonight's show with what's been going on with Blizzard, especially also drinking sweet peach wine. Uh, Fire X says, have Mark say in his most Chinese accent, Taiwan, number one, China, number two. You don't have to do that unless you, if you want to, you can, but, uh, I'm, I'm not going to make you. <laughs> in my best Chinese accent. Um, I think they mean most like stereotypical or whatever. Most stereotypical. Well, I get a pass for that. So I could. I just don't think I could pull off the accent convincingly, but, um, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, Taiwan number one, uh, China number two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Why? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Thank you for that. I was born there. I can say that. Ooh. Yeah, you, you have all the passes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, Lay E.G. says, Mark, you may not realize, but if you stood up Nick, he would have drowned his sorrows in liquor with a certain Naruto hat wearing ex-gang member. <laughs> now that uh, sounds really specific. <laughs> uh, this is this is deep lore. Um, so long story short, I've been covering this Vic Mignogna anime lawsuit. Um, one of the defendants, uh, Ron Toye, was scheduled to go on the stream for an interview with this guy named Mad Black Entertainment or Mad Black Atheist or the League of Darkness. I don't know. He has like 27 YouTube channels. Um, he was scheduled to go on his live stream and he stands him up and messages him in the middle of it saying basically, oh, I thought you canceled. Right. Like Completely rude, uh, but does it. And then um, Mad Black decides to go on a tirade shortly after that threatening to like murder my entire family um and and to call up his crip connections and have me killed it was really weird it was okay. very it was very strange very strange so so yeah if you would have if you would have stood me up i would have had to drown my sorrows in liquor and then order mob hits on someone else right cuz you didn't you stood me up but someone else would have to take the brunt of that uh <laughs> I'd find this guy named Con Jelly and I would I would go after his family, I suppose. Uh, Miku Evo Racing says, hey, Nick, it's been a while since I caught you live. Had a hot date with a mom tonight. Took her to my favorite ramen shop and raced go karts that go 50 miles an hour. We'll be seeing more of each other. Here's some money for a good night. Hey, buddy. Uh, ramen go karts and a mom. I guess that's uh, that's awesome. I hope it works out for you. Cesario JPN says, where is Liberty Prime from the Fallout games when you need him? This would be his moment to shine. Democracy is non-negotiable. Communism <laughs> is a temporary setback on the road to freedom. Also, hashtag May with Hong Kong. Oh, yeah. So are they weaponizing May now from Overwatch? Oh, that's 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 the thing. It's like they're they're trying to get May, at least May, if not Overwatch, banned in China because May is now a symbol of uh, Hong Kong freedom. And there were posters... <laughs> that people were working on on Twitter and I was I was amplifying this. I was like, hey, these guys need help translating this. So they got it out there and uh before you know it, uh it was in it was covered by news there and it's you know it's plastered over the subways and it's starting <laughs> to to do that. And so now they want to do this to Mickey Mouse. So <laughs> Oh yeah, ban Disney in China. That'd be great. Now they want to do this to Mickey Mouse. So you know, um, that's an interesting yeah. grassroots trade war. What a concept. Yeah, it's mimetic warfare. And it's 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 a really good idea, I think, because there's only, you know, people are, are boycotting Blizzard and stuff. And I'm like, listen, make your own choice. I I, I, I canceled my WoW subscription. I deleted all my Battle.net uh, games. But uh, I don't I don't judge you if, if you want to keep playing this stuff. Um, you know, but, um, 
but if you want to, you know, really strike back and make a difference, promoting Hong Kong May and memeing the heck out of Blizzard characters is probably going to do a lot more for you to be able to make an impact than any individual boycott. So, um, so yeah, people have been doing this, and it's been it's been both scary and hilarious at the same time because within not even 24 hours later after the first drafts were we were passing around on my twitter feed it was up in hong kong uh right away so um that was stunning and and you know and and basically they've they've co-opted her as a symbol of hong kong freedom and if it gets big enough blizzard's going to have another problem on their hands oh god i hope that happens I hope it happens. I I love companies having to eat their own Schadenfreude. Like I I love that. That's the funniest thing that that can happen, right? Like they just have to like gosh, a pro Chinese player at a Blizzard event would be great. Um yeah, this having to ban May. Someone someone in the chat said May's voice actor is uh super pro China, <laughs> which makes it even funnier. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. <laughs> well, uh, look, you, you just found your offended party for that. Right. That's the one, the one, the one mm-hmm. blizzard contractor that, uh, mm-hmm. that was offended by it. Uh, the Scott says blizzard is a lost cause. Their system has been rigged for years to ban any unpopular persons, whether guilty or not. When you successfully appeal a ban in their games, they do not reverse the ban on your accounts. Uh, internal record. You know, I I, got to say this. It's like I I don't want politics in games. I'm actually okay with with, as long as it's fair saying let's just talk games, you know, because I want a place that everyone with different opinions can come together and have a good time and maybe get to know each other and learn from each other. Right. Right. So. The the problem is the shenanigans around this and the severity of the reaction. Um you know, they were caught with their pants down and they did the wrong thing. And now they're trying to like backpedal like crazy. So, but I'm actually okay with saying with, you know, uh, like I'm a, I'm a freedom of speech proponent, right? Like, right. But make it clear. That's all. Just make it clear. We don't want any political speech during these pre and post uh, tournament broadcasts. And if you have overt political speech, we're going to have to cut it off. Like we're going to have to stop it because that's not what this is for. Yeah, and and I'm fine with game companies moderating chat on their platform because there's kids there and because there's, you know, and say, hey, keep it friendly, you know, um, <clears throat> keep it uh, keep it at a G level of conversation. That's fine. Uh, what I have a problem with is when Blizzard says, and they've said this in the past, that if you say something off their platform, they reserve the right to punish you for that and take your games away and everything else. That is a corporation that now you're not just policing your platform and making sure that you have a, a brand image that you want and everything else. You're policing people's behavior outside of your game. And that I, I just, I just can't agree with that. Yeah. That's, that's really annoying. Um, Oh God, I was gonna, I was gonna say something in line with that, but no, you got it. You nailed it anyway Uh, oh wait no uh i do i have i have to disagree with you mildly um if a company has a problem with speech and wants it to be g-rated there are numerous filters available to get rid of particular language this is what i don't like uh from twitch for example the twitch chat itself apparently they don't like you know various racial slurs and stuff like that but Ch- uh, Twitch has the ability to filter the chat. They can filter words off their platform. It's like, wait a minute. If you don't want someone spamming the N word in a in a in a gaming chat on Twitch, that's fine. Why do you allow it to be there? Right? Like, if if Twitch doesn't, they what they what they do though is they try and make the creator, the Twitch streamer, go ahead and enforce the ban for them. It's like, well, that doesn't make any sense to me. I don't like that part of it. So like if mm. if uh, if if Blizzard has a, a set of banned words and they want to impose a, a a filter for it, 
where you know they don't want the f bomb because there's a bunch of kids or whatever they don't want racial or or uh homosexual slurs or something like that cool uh block those words block them it's my opinion so you're saying that that you would just you would you you would disagree if i said that if someone evaded those filters and actually got something through no i think that's see i think that's different i think if you evade the filter then there's more evidence that they can say look we put in these filters we took reasonable protections we tried to keep you from screwing up now you've evaded those filters now we can go ahead and 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 at, on a case by case basis, look at what you've done and determine if it's violative. Because maybe the maybe it was some weird sort of confluence of events that made you say uh, the n you spell out the n word in individual letters or something over a period of time. I don't think so, but but they could look at it and at that point and then say no, we we've we've taken all sorts of lengths to ban these particular words that we find offensive. It's in the terms of service that these words are offensive. And you know that, and you evaded that. Then I think they have the ammo to do it. Personally, um, I just, okay. I just, uh, I'm not a fan of banning any words ever, uh, personally. But if you're going to ban them, I want it to be upfront. I want it to be overt. And if you have a software capability to ban them, implement it. In my opinion, like if you're going to ban something, just do it. So you're saying Twitch has filters but doesn't use them? Yes. For the, uh, for the chat, right? Not for the streamer. You can't stop yeah. a streamer from saying something. Um, because I can impose a ban on specific words in Twitch and on YouTube. In the YouTube chat, like I could go in and say, okay. no one can say Jew in the chat. So if someone tried to type it in, it would just reject their, their line or whatever. Um, uh, and, and people have used that to various effect because you can customize it. Like if you don't want a person mentioned in your chat you could remove them because there's too much drama involved or whatever your court order not to talk about them so you want to be careful you could do that um but uh that with that of course means that the platform itself has the software capability to do that and they don't and i know this has existed for a long time everquest filtered out uh all uh, all basic profanity right yeah um, well chat filters too Right. So they, they can do it. If you don't like the words, just filter them, like filter them out and say, we don't accept these words. Uh, don't allow people to override the filter. Just be upfront about it. That's my whole thing is uh, make an honest and overt agreement with the customer for what they're getting into. That's all. I probably way overstated that point, but that's what I that's what I mean. <laughs> OK. Uh, Kaz Ma says, assuming the May meme takes off, what do you think the likely response is from China or from Blizzard for that matter? Uh, also, Ember looks cool. Mark, does the game have a pet class or pet skills like WoW Hunter or MM from COV? Uh, so little, what was the first, first part of that question? First part is if the May meme takes off, what do you think China or Blizzard will do to respond? Well, the hope is, is that China reacts very in, in their typical fashion and bans the character, if not the entire game, because that's that's the way to to make yourself heard uh, if you're passionate about this issue and about Hong Kong. Um, will they do it? I don't know. That's interesting. I think they have to at some point because of this. But the symbol has to get really big. It has to be so iconic that anybody in china once they play overwatch and they and they see may in the game instantly says oh yeah hong kong at, at that point the government will step in so we need a bunch of naked mays clothed in hong kong flags right like that's that just be clothed <laughs> Well, like, but I mean, I mean, like, uh, you know, I like, I don't understand a, the naked qualifier in that context because trust me, we got, we've got <laughs> under boobs sticking out. We've got very suggestively short okay. skirts, you know, just like Hong Kong flags, uh, tied up in various, uh, very evocative ways around May, right? Like that's, uh, you gotta have like borderline May hentai just with Hong Kong flags all over. I guess oh, that... it, it's it's doing well just as is. I mean, with the um, with the the stencil images and the fan art coming out, uh, that it's 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 just really well done. And there's some really nice artwork uh, with her being the symbol of freedom for Hong Kong. So yeah, if that 
it's big enough if the news starts picking up on it more and more and more of these signs are cropping up um, and it gets, you know, plastered all over the, the, the train stations, then Blizzard's got a problem. And uh, what's really funny is they, the May statue is no longer available on the Blizzard store. And there's a lot of speculation. Did they pull it? Because it, it disappeared mysteriously just yesterday, <laughs> or or did it or did it sell out? But normally, if something sells out, they just put a, a a sold out icon on there. But maybe they don't. I mean, I I don't know. I've never shopped at the Blizzard store. I don't follow how they list their merchandise. But yeah, her statue disappeared yesterday, which was really uh, which was the day after it hit news in Hong Kong. So that was kind of interesting. What about what about uh, naked May ball gagged and in the red ball gag is the uh, the Chinese uh, star from the flag, right? That'd be good. <laughs> That's a it's evocative and and provocative at the same time. It's perfect. How's that vodka? <laughs> Listen, listen, I, I'm like one shot away from being art director for the next hentai of Overwatch. <laughs> Um, and so the second part of that question was about Ember. Can you have yeah. a pet class? Yeah, are there uh, pet classes? We don't have. We don't currently have a pet class. We do have pets in the game that are planned, uh, that are cosmetics. Uh, had thought about pets. Um, I can give that some thought, but I have to be honest and say no. We hadn't thought about that. It's a. Uh, that's an interesting. I mean, I guess you could in. Um, as I'm thinking about it, you know, Mecca with pets would just be like little AI, uh, you know, androids or whatever, right? That run no, around. It, 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 I'm talking about little cute fuzzy things that sit on the shoulder of your mech, you know? Well, I've been, but I think they're mm. they're talking about a pet class that utilizes a a small non-player character to do damage and to, you know, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. They're like talking. A, it, they're talking about about you know uh, having a kaiju as a pet. Can you imagine? You're walking around and Godzilla's your pet. <laughs> no, but you you'd have like a little mini mecha, right? Like little little <clears throat> android mecha, un, unpiloted AIs that are or unpiloted oh, yeah, robots. True. You could have that. You could. That's actually pretty cool. So yeah, if you wanted to extend the mecha theme, you could have like a uh, a four legged sort of mech companion that would go out and do stuff. That's kind of a cool idea. Thank or, a, you. or like a baby kaiju taming class. That'd be kind of funny. Like you, you capture yeah, we have, eggs. We have different sizes of kaiju. We have different categories. And so they're smaller ones. So you could have like a wow hunter class where you go out and, and, and tame one of these things. Because what's happened is these kaiju, they're the war machines, the siege engines of the, the Tsihu shapeshifter army. So they are basically enslaved they've got technology they've got you know implants in the back of their skull they have weapon systems grafted onto them and so if you freed one of these kaiju i guess it could be your pet or something like that this so game that sounds freaking cool, cool. It's it's going to be. Uh, we're trying to make it the as cool as we can, you know, being an indie studio. And we've got some big plans like the the kaiju. Uh, we have a pantheon of kaiju coming out because right now on our website, you, you see our characters, you see our mecha, you see the dropship. Uh, you don't see the kaiju yet, really. So that's coming. So we've got and, and there's category zero up to category five kaiju. And we have some hero kaiju coming out. These are called the uh, the prime kaiju, and there's going to be seven of them. So they will all have names, just like you've got, you know, and you've got Mothra, Godzilla, and, and everybody else. Uh, these will all have names, and these will be, you know, rare spawn occurrences in the world that come and start taking your bases apart brick by brick. And you have to all gang up against it at the same time. And you can actually, like, wall, uh, wall run against the flanks of this stuff. You can stand on the back and start taking out some of the shield generators that's how big we're trying to make these kaiju so it's like a like like um not a uh shadow of the colossus where you're a little bit a little bit like shadow of colossus yeah yeah that's that's yeah, awesome that's, yeah. and like some final <laughs> fantasy 11 type stuff where you've got these raids on your on your towns that are that are these instant sort of attacks that you have to go after and and band together as a community to repel the invasion or although i i assume there will be like some 
uh, impact to winning or losing that encounter as a community. There is. There's, there's the, the basically the more that you expand the world and b- build bases, and the more resources because you're you're collecting a lot of resources in this game, and the more resources you collect and and donate to these bases, the better your capabilities are, the faster your research to unlock recipes, weapons, and abilities, and. Uh, it affects the world tech tier, which is the highest level of gear that can be crafted in the world. And if you lose territory, the world tech tier falls. And that means you can no longer craft the highest level tech in the game. Uh, and if anything you're wearing that's of that highest tech level breaks, you can't repair it until you you know you want it back. So that's a world uh, community incentive to participate in the invasions and to push back against the invasions and to build bases. There's a there's a sort of like a, a server wide effort an alignment of of interests that will um, have players banding together to protect those bases and to push into new territory. Is this available on mobile? <laughs> Do you not have phones? <laughs> Dang it! <laughs> so my follow-up <laughs> joke. No, uh, people are people are asking: Is this PC only, or is there plans to put it out on game systems as well? Or yeah, or what's... this is. This is uh, our our focus is PC. The, we do plan to have stretch goals for console versions during the Kickstarter, and uh, we do want to support Linux. But you won't probably see a native Linux build. You'll see a Windows build running on the Vulkan graphics API that can easily be uh, run with with uh, with a, a thin layer of uh, compatibility for Linux. I don't gotcha. know. I don't know if, if anyone followed what I just said, but yeah, we want to so run like a, run on consoles. You run like a Windows instance inside Linux <laughs> and then run the game, and uh... it, it, it's it's not it's not like a, a VM or anything like that. It's it's much lighter. People use different layers to get game compatibility, but we're just trying to make it really easy so that you can use off the shelf stuff to get it running. And there's actually one of our. Uh, our our backers and fans who is a engineer at red hat and he's got the the current uh developer demos running in uh linux right now so awesome that's that's positive uh that's great i i know so many people who hate windows i of course only use windows as a as a lay a basically lay, a lay person so uh mm-hmm. Matthew Neidig says, Mr. Kern, did Blizzard adopt the kinds of nebulous rules that allow them to determine what to enforce and when while you were a developer or when did this change and how are players supposed to act in accordance with them? I wrote some of them. <laughs> I, I wrote to, yes so yeah this is this is this every company does this you you try to draft terms that are very favorable to yourself so that if you forget or leave anything out that you have an out that you have something that you can do and that is uh that's that's just standard so <clears throat> i don't think it was anything that was nefarious with intent but it can be nefarious in application yeah, that's uh, that's kind of how these things have played out. If anybody followed um, Vox Day's lawsuit against Indiegogo, which ended up going to arbitration, um, the interesting thing about that is Indiegogo wrote the arbitration clause with the intent, it appeared, to have an intent, intent to apply to the buyer, right? So you start an Indiegogo campaign, your customers come in and Indiegogo has to ban individual customers from receiving the product because of something like a a comment that you put when you made your, when you made your uh, purchase or something like that, or you use fraud and they ban that. But then uh, what Indiegogo ended up doing was banning a creator. And then those rules got applied to the creator as opposed to the, the person. This is how it works in, in the bad way for the company. Um, But a lot of times the companies will create this set of rules that exists uh and then those rules will uh, they'll look back later at an event like this uh mark mark had said earlier it, it appears that blizzard was completely unprepared for this type of statement and how would they have been prepared when writing the hearthstone tournament rules to know that hong kong would go into this this state that it was in those hong kong rules have or those uh hearthstone rules have probably been copy and pasted with very minor uh technical legal modifications um for for the past couple of years. It's not like they're rewriting and delving deep into these each time 
uh, a new tournament comes up. So uh, they're they're just they just get a mild refresh. So, they are now. Yeah, now they're going to get <laughs> now they're going to get Roto Rooter uh, depth, and and they're going to have to really dig into them and make sure. But up until this, they just had this sort of archetypal language that was in there, and they looked for anything they could find to justify their action. So um, it doesn't mean that the the intent at the time of drafting is nefarious. Um, the the question is is do you use that drafting with integrity later on? Yep. Uh, Bronza, my man, says FYI, Blizzard has been banning any Battle.net account that has a battle tag that includes Hong Kong. Keep up the great work, Nick. Hashtag boycott Blizzard. Uh, JX. I don't think it was actually a ban. I think it, the, the name just gets rejected if it contains free Hong Kong. I do not believe it was a ban, but I could be wrong. I haven't logged into my Battle.net account in over a <clears throat> year, and lately I'm playing because the only the only game I ever played from Blizzard was uh was diablo 2 and 3 and 1 diablo 1 2 and 3 so i i never had to pay um i think i bought like one thing from the auction house once but we still need a battle.net account to play online for diablo 2 and 3 yeah it's just not uh there's no money involved so i hadn't even thought about it right Um, I just have a Battle.net account because of Diablo 3, which I haven't played in like a year. Lately, I'm playing Path of Exile, which is a crazy, interesting game. I don't know if you've ever looked at it. It's a very cool game. Yeah. And Tencent owns it. Ah, <laughs> uh, damn it. <laughs> they bought the company, yeah. Uh, JXDVX says, streaming on a weekend. Here's a 20. You need to construct additional pylons. Also, loved StarCraft, Mark. I fully support additional abs in Ember. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> um let's see what have we got here uh blaine 20 says hey grums did you catch the naval pick of may i posted on twitter giggity <laughs> uh maybe i don't know i i get a lot of aren't picks you, aren't my you way. opposed to the naval no no it's, i'm a naval connoisseur oh, that's right you're 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 yeah a connoisseur of the naval yeah, that whole started with with Pax has a um, uh, a ban on cosplay that shows ex- uh, aggressive. That's right, aggressive, aggressive naval cleavage or naval. And I was like, okay, I know what aggressive cleavage is, but what is aggressive naval? And so that's what started the whole meme on my Twitter thread. And I guess I, I've become a living meme for the naval now. So, because we we were re, reposting all sorts of stuff about trying to answer the question, because it's a vital question: what is an aggressive naval? I'm not familiar with aggressive cleavage. Can you explain aggressive cleavage? <laughs> Would you need some examples? <laughs> no, I I because I, I have a specific idea of what I think aggressive cleavage is. I doubt it's what the audience is thinking. I'm thinking right now. You're thinking but, under boot. No. no, I'm thinking I'm thinking boob that exceeds the bounds uh, in. Let's see. How do I how do I put this uh, exceeds the maximum rating of distance from the physical chest that the garment would allow? How's that? So it's like <laughs> it's like flowing over and forward from the garment. That's aggressive, oh, like okay. like a Renfest outfit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's a particularly attractive look uh, or automatically attractive look. That's what I'm talking about. So I want to know what your definition of aggressive cleavage is, because you said you know what it is. Well, uh, to <laughs> me, it was about it was about yardage. It was you know, <laughs> it was about, you know, surface area of, of, of skin compared to surface area of clothing. But see, and, I find that uh, inherently discriminatory against certain body shapes. And how dare you body shame? women in that way sir it's a ratio it's not an absolute (laughs) (laughs) uh nova zero says mei ling stands with hong kong as does pro lgbtqia ptmz and soros she males i guess soldier 76 and tracer they slash them slash it slash zer slash burr uh uh oh frack it Mm. China up and offline itself. Uh, okay, I kind of so, follow that comment. Yes, Soldier seventy six is 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 gay in U.S. canon lore and mm. straight in China. 
so you know when someone pointed that out i said blizzard's playing you they're they're you know the it's like <laughs> so soldier soldier 76 is a character yeah in, in overwatch in overwatch okay so he's gay in the u.s and straight mm-hmm. in china yeah mm-hmm. okay gotcha see i thought soldier 76 was like some other distinction i didn't realize it was a blizzard character i'm so I, again i only played diablo so if he's not in it i don't know what's what's up sandwich caretaker says at the end of the day china will always remain the same power hungry needy and will always be the spoiled brat that will have that whatever i want is mine attitude and will cry profusely if people say otherwise it's hilarious how blizzard paints themselves as the hero i guess the old time saying of the villain is always the hero of their own story still rings true to this day uh i don't know if you had any comment for that but that's what it was no but it was uh, quite eloquent so there you go well those are the uh those are the immediate questions i have um so now what I've got to do is read all the rest of the comments, but I always like to offer my guests the ability uh, to take off because I know you're a very busy guy. So if you want to hang out, you are certainly welcome. But if you wanted to make a, a peaceful exit before I spend the next 40 minutes reading chats, um, uh, I would offer you the opportunity to say whatever you want to say as a closing thought. It's up to you. I appreciate that. I think I hung around for for that last time, but it is uh, past midnight here, and I do have a D and D game tomorrow uh, that I'm playing with uh, my kids and uh, my friends' kids. So uh, I'm going to thank you for the opportunity, Nick, again for being on your show. Um, really enjoyed going through the Blizzard uh, statement as well as the eh, the vodka and everything else. <laughs> <laughs> That's always a good time on your show. And uh, I want to thank the audience too for uh, sticking with us so long. I know it's been, you know, uh, you guys were very patient to wait for me as I was finish- finishing my Twitter rant. And <laughs> it was a worthy here. delay, a worthy <laughs> delay. And, uh, and so, yeah, so thank you very much. And um, yeah, we should uh, definitely get together again when the Kickstarter is ready. We should play the game. Oh, I would love that very much. Let me know, man. Sounds good. Take care, everyone. Have a good night. All right. Thanks, buddy. Peace. Uh, Over to here. Okay. Get rid of these guys. Get rid of these guys. That was Mark Kern. Mark Kern, of course, is a former developer over at Blizzard with a substantial amount of credits you would recognize to his name. Um, Always like having Mark on the show. Great guy. Make sure if you uh, are interested in what he had to say today, go check out the things he has uh, joined me for in the past, um, which I think you can find just by typing Mark Kern and Ricada Law. They He should be tagged in those videos. So uh, that's that. This is the point where I'm going to read through the existing Super Chats and Justice Chats that were under $20. Um, that, that have kind of built up throughout the show. Thank you guys for being very patient. I, I knew Mark, uh, I like to respect my guest's time as much as possible. And I knew Mark had had some level of time constraint tonight. So I wanted to make sure we, we got through the Blizzard document and all of that stuff. Um, I really do appreciate that. If you are gonna hang out for the chats, that is great. Uh, I will, it's gonna be, 3 a.m. by the time I'm done, so I do not believe I will be on Twitch tonight. But uh, watch the channel tomorrow. The YouTube channel tomorrow. Watch it tomorrow. Not for a live stream. There will not be a live stream tomorrow outside of some really... Some some circumstance that I do not foresee occurring tonight. Uh, so we're talking a very low percentage chance. There should not be a live stream tomorrow but watch for a normal video upload tomorrow. I will announce it. I will ask you guys politely to share it as much as possible. Trust me, trust me, many of you want to see this video. You do. Um, I, I don't, I say that with confidence um, and, and in honoring that confidence to you guys, I think that's something you definitely are interested in. I think you'll definitely be happy to share it. But uh, that is coming out tomorrow, so watch that. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not 
I'm not going to say anything more about what the content of the video is other than just keep an eye on the channel. I will announce, I will post the video. I will post to YouTube, uh, the community tab when the video is up, just in case you don't get a notification on the video itself. I will have my intern tweet it out on Twitter. Uh, this is an important, important video that will go up tomorrow. So check it out. Um, and, uh, and share it with your friends, please, because I, I cannot share it on my Twitter. Twitter has, has taken my balls harder than China has and, uh, and sucked on them lovingly, but not given them back. Uh, that's what they did. So thank you to Twitter for that. Uh, it looks like my ban is probably permanent um, on Twitter. So I may, I may never get to publi publicly participate in public discourse or anything like that ever again, uh, unless unless the Supreme Court rules that somehow I have some weird right to do so, which is unlikely in the foreseeable future. So uh, I am still appealing it, but uh, every rejected appeal feels a little bit more. And guys, they come pretty quick. We're talking within within an hour. Uh, my appeals are rejected. Have you ever gotten customer service? Think about that. Think of what I had to do to get customer service within one hour of a request uh, on Twitter. And if you've ever waited longer than an hour for customer service, I have gotten an hour response time on customer service from Twitter within or uh, about 18 times since being banned. So there you go. So there you go. <laughs> uh, I have a Gab account. I just really hate the Gab interface. I really do. So, so there you go. All right, guys. Uh, let's uh, let's read through these justice chats. But um, I just thank you for indulging me on on the nebulous. Oh God, I hate Streamlabs sometimes. Uh, Someone is actually working on a system to um, allow me to manage Super Chats and Streamlab donations in the same thing, which I can't wait for. Uh, it's awesome. One of, my, one of my Discord mods is a, is a developer who's been working on that. And if any other YouTubers out there are curious about that, let me know. I'll see if he's interested in licensing that sort of, that sort of material. But uh, thank you, Discord, for or not Discord, Streamlabs, for completely biffing my ability to easily access chats randomly. Right, that's the problem. Okay, let's uh, let's start up with this now. I pissed off the wrong Twitter mod. No kidding. No quitting. No kidding. Twitter mod that I pissed off must have been a fat lady, only because you know I made fun of fat ladies. Well, a fat lady, not, see, this is the thing that isn't fair. It's not fair. I didn't make fun of all fat women. I made fun of a fat woman. Very rude. Very rude. Uh, okay. What's the date today? Here we go. All right. So Mercenary X says, Nick, a couple of college students at American Tournament for Hearthstone, I love a free Hong Kong boycott Blizzard sign on the live stream. And the only thing that happened to them was Blizzard did nothing to them and only just cut off the stream on them. Yeah, Mark mentioned that. I didn't realize when he was talking about that 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 was after, after the other guy's event. That's amazing. Uh, he follows up. The students didn't get any didn't get anything to happen to them. They were given their next tournament match. At which point they decided to boycott and forfeit the entire tournament out of protest. Blizzard is nothing but a mercenary, only interested in money. Now, interestingly, Blizzard should only be interested in money. That's the purpose of a company. And that's why they shouldn't have gotten into this weird game in the first place involving political speech. I have a Minds account as well. All of these things are linked in the description of the video. Um, I haven't posted on Minds in a long time. I need to. I just hate. For a very short time, I was trying to post on Twitter, Gab, and Minds all at the same time. And like each extra step was a pain. It was a pain to do so. I need some some sort of social media blast post that's that's available. But uh, and I'm sure there is one, but guys, please remember I'm 
such a boomer. I don't know how to do it. Or I just need an assistant to do it for me. One of those things. Maybe I can make the intern post all of it. That'd be great. TLJ Screwjob says, so this whole hashtag free Hong Kong is because of the years of British rule, right? I mean, it's not like Iraq and Afghanistan where they literally had no actually actual idea how demo democracy worked. Hong Kong learned it from the British like the U.S. Yes. Yes, they did. Uh, Heinrich Berndowski says, The great Tiananmen Square Zerg rush of 1989. No, Heinrich, no. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Richard says, Hero, I am big super like fan of you channel, but China number one. Hong Kong stupid. They dumb, no fun, you no like. Everyone in China have good party fun time. We no have work camps. They party camps. Everyone skinny from drugs and sexy sex. China good. You come China. I would love to go to China uh, and see it firsthand. Um, my parents went to China several years ago, and the trip was fascinating to hear about. Um, I certainly don't want to live there. But I don't know, maybe because of YouTube, I can't. I doubt it. I doubt they know who I am yet. Uh, but, man, I'd, I'd like to just go see what it's like. Uh, Henry Al, because, you know, I, I think communism is repulsive. That's, that's why. And so I'd like to experience it in this weird, high-tech, pseudo-communist, pseudo-capitalist, capitalist where it makes the Communist Party money uh, environment is amazing. Henry Aller says, I'm going to dip my balls into some Thousand Island dressing because I got depression. I'm going to avoid my taxes. Then I'm going to get arrested because I got depression. I want to know what that's about. Joe Nathan Joestar says, the weeb stream and Bible stream need to happen. I know it's weird. I'm super interested in both. Not that I haven't been happy with the current content on the channel. I stand with Vic Free Hong Kong and NBA is a whiny bitch. Also, Second Amendment for all. I agree. And believe me, the weeb stream, Bible stream, big brain panel, Chad dad chat, those things are coming uh, very soon as as we move away from having daily lawsuit related content. There will be more of that other content available. I love doing those streams and they're hopefully going to have more and varied interviews on the channel, stuff like that. I love doing that. I love talking to Mark tonight. I just like getting other people's perspectives and stories. Like I've had Mark on the show and I never knew he grew up, uh, you know, in Hong Kong, in Tibet, um, in Japan. That's, that's just fascinating to me because it's a life experience that I don't get. I never had that. And so I like to hear about it from someone else. Um, so there will be more of that. Beige Devil says, Mark, do you consider yourself to be an American citizen or a global citizen? That's a good question. I assume American, but I don't know. Uh, Lucas says, Lucas Z says, viewing this stream has lowered your social credit score by negative 100,000 points. Please show proper obedience to glorious God Emperor Ginny the Pooh or report directly to internal and not anatomical redistribution. Oh, no, not that. Knight of Opex says, isn't there something in judicial precedent called an ephemeral contract or some it's illusory contract is what you're talking about where if something is too one-sided as a contract it actually doesn't constitute an agreement between the parties i.e i get everything you get nothing type arrangements yes and shockingly those are rarely if ever applied to adhesion contracts even though they should be applied to those contracts almost exclusively sexy mailbox says this whole thing was a real eye-opener to how many u.s companies are more than just bootlickers than but traitors to democracy not just to the u.s this is a millennial red dawn situation but it's in corporate boardrooms and not in the streets so hashtag wolverines it should be hashtag wolverines with suits hell snake says taiwan number one china number four uh fluffy side up says mark on the subject of your game is there any chance it will hit consoles he did address this uh that'll be a stretch goal on the kickstarter i believe he said also, would there be a possibility to put in a uh, put in a piece of story where you pilot pilot a giant mech like the Godzilla movies, like a neat raid or something like that? Who knows? 
Little Snake says, China got all its money from all the gold farms and not just WoW. Hashtag GTFO China. Bad Dragonite says, not the biggest fan of Microsoft lately, but at least they outright come out and say we aren't a free speech platform and they don't try to sidestep it. This is the important thing, right? Be honest. Fluffy side up says Black Desert, a new desert, a new MMORPG actually does the word filters to the point if you type the word something in the chat, it will show up as uh oh S O star 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 I N G. And if you type in pass, it's P star star star. It's really annoying at times, lol. It's annoying all the time. I just want companies to be honest. Whether or not it's annoying is is certainly not. So they filter out meth. That's why something. Uh, so good job. Good job, them. Um, okay, let's... Uh, that was the Justice Chats. Let's move on to Super Chats. True American Hero says, Firefall died because Mark Kern spent all the money on a bus. He actually talked about the bus in a different, um, in a different stream. And uh, basically, the cost of the bus versus the cost of a booth at E3 was trivial. Uh, you can make up your own minds on that, but he did talk about it and address it there. Michael Hoff says, did China hack you? That why I got to pay the late fee. Yes and yes. TLJ Screwjob says, China's got the sacred ointment all up in Blizzard. Did you guys see Chris Sabat try and walk back the sacred ointment uh, thing? Oh, I, I never, I never did. I never did that. I did that, but I, I didn't do that. That was someone else. Uh, Spudnock says, what? Multi-track grifting. The reasonable extremist says, how you doing tonight, Rick? Sands is in Smash uh, Smash Brothers. Okay. Mario Carter 13 says, Lakata Raw, the Chinese Coke and Rice it up. Coke and it rice up. Come on. <sighs> I read Coke as like Coke from French. Coke Vin, Chicken. JP Gratrakis Dr Gatrocket says justice for Annis. GoFundMe needs twenty thousand by the end of tonight. Oh no, Annis Abdon needs twenty grand by the end of tonight. Oh dang it! Uh, justice for Annis. He's at fourteen thousand three hundred twelve dollars. I hope he needs it. I hope he has more than just tonight to get it done. Um. Hmm. Hopefully he can raise it. Oh, excuse me. Here is the uh, link. I'm going to post it in the chat. I wish I would have seen that earlier. I'm spamming it. Don't ban me for spamming. Um, Anis Abdin is the guy who wrote, who created a game that it really, really looks like CBS stole portions of for Star Trek Discovery. Uh, and then and then went to court and suggested that uh, the immutable characteristics of tardigrades, including uh, include light uh, faster than light speed travel. Good job, good job, liars. Yes, man. Twenty forty four says today is my birthday. Can I do a shot with you? I can't do another shot, but I will take a sip with you if you're still there. Yes, man. Are you still there? You are. Yes, man. Twenty forty four. Here you are, buddy. Uh, this is that garbage beat vodka. And it's hit vodka hits me pretty fast. Hmm. Happy birthday, pal. Oh god, why is it so gross? This wouldn't mix well. It's too it's got too distinctive a flavor. I don't like it. Conspiratorial walnut says uh all praise to the booty slider in ember there's a booty slider oh that's amazing jason stevens says fun fact the alpaca is chinese symbol of love and gratitude there you go steven stefan sanderson says hi mark hi mark a friend wondered that since blizzard's gay characters are straight in china does it prove they did so to avoid contra controversy in the west uh will probably avoid controversy in the east is what they're more concerned about super black cat 13 says um, for Mark, what are your thoughts on RNG overload since the old days, since it's dramatically increased so much if you still play? Uh, no idea. Unfortunately, I didn't get to that one while he was still here. Um, 
RNG is interesting in my opinion. That's what I actually liked about the Blizzard auction house and what I uh, for Diablo 3. And if you have problems with the cash auction house, that's fine. I d I'm not debating the cash versus, versus non-cash portion. I'm not debating pay to win. The auction house in Blizzard was interesting because RNG was um, brutal at the release of Diablo 3. However, however, you could go to this auction house area and, and find and trade items and develop characters out that way. You see the same thing with a player, oh, excuse me, a player driven economy in Path of Exile and other games. RNG needs to be reflective of the ability to interact with other people. The problem was when they disabled both auction houses in Diablo 3, they had to increase the rare drops, a rare and unique drops for Diablo 3. And that made it so that getting a legendary item went from some really interesting event that was noticeable. Like, oh, I got a legendary item at all to something that happens several times a day, um, if not several times in the same run. It, it reduces the impact of that legendary item and then makes legendary items a gearing necessity rather than a gearing boon. And that's a real balance problem, I think, for, for games that are out there. So RNG just needs to be balanced heavily with the ability to conduct a, a player-driven economy. That's my opinions on it. Uh, Alexander Gro Hamilton says EA is still alive after the garbage they've done. And this will be no different by Christmas. Blizzard drones will go back to their sour milky and report people for using no, no words with no sense of irony. Combat Frito says Blizzard's response was sent out on a, on the 11th at 524 PM Pacific, but is dated at the top for the 12th would be 824 AM. The 12th in China time. Curious. Mad Black Man Lover Entertainment says, ask Mark his thoughts on gay thugs. <laughs> James says, I think the lifetime ban was for the broadcasters. Oh, there you go. Ishalesen says, it's Blizzard. We all know Anders' account is still active because you can't cancel a subscription from prison. Clayton Ansel says, yo, dog, did you get a Kiwi Farm shirt? I have not. Gosh, I should buy a Kiwi Farm shirt. John Albert says, uh, Mark is Macau suffering similar things as Hong Kong. Uh, oh, he's asking, is Macau suffering similar thing as Hong Kong? I have no idea. Unfortunately, Mark is gone. Master Knight DH says, I've tried fighting back against gaming community toxicity, but people have refused to listen. For every one Ultima quest of the Avatar, there's like 20 hatreds. What can be done about it? What's wrong with hatred? That's my question for you. I'm I'm not I know what hatred is. I'm not familiar with its uh relationship to Ultima Quest of the Avatar, but is there a problem with hatred? I don't I don't know. I don't see one because I'm always of the opinion of if you don't like it, don't buy it. Moist John Moist John says, "Bring back Huak." Actors of foreign state should not be allowed to subvert host nations and are not equal competitors in a free market. Blaze Syndiquil. This Blizzard stance reminds me of a quote from Three Body Problem. Oh, I'm supposed to read that. It's supposed to be really good. Quote, treating you too severely would just be a mistake in method, but treating you too laxly would be a mistake in political direction. Blink your eyes, 1400 says uh can we get an f in chat for the horse rider who fell off their horse at the georgia national fair in perry she was able to walk away from it why would we get why would we give her an f in chat if she was able to walk away is it wasn't did she die d man dog 056 says could the u.s government help hong kong if they choose to well of course they can but they there's no way they would Sparks7907 says Blizzard has made statements on Trump and the LGBT crowd. They're not apolitical in the least. Very left-leaning, in fact. Henry A says, brother, I am pinned here. There you go. Ethan Fletcher says, could this fuel talks to regulate esports? Would this have happened if it was? 
this stuff was is going to happen one way or another. The only regulation you can do is regulation of the video stream to add in a buffer time like every other broadcast medium has that would allow you to react to something in real time. Sandwich, uh, Sandwich Caretaker says, um, oh wait, I read those. Sheldon Barfield says, F China, freedom for Hong Kong. I came back for WoW Classic to support Blizzard for listening to the fans. Then this happens. Mad Black Hose Delight says, any five, long boy, if a thug to love hit me up. <laughs> Bad Dragonite says, looking forward to Ember. We'll definitely be backing. Blaine20 says, crypto is programmable money. The supplier can turn it off remotely. Venomine says, how plausible is it for the U.S. to make stringent license agreements on consumers illegal and just leave it legal for inter-business operations? Uh, they can, it has to happen at the court level. Skaki Onsai says, yeet the beat. Yeet the bait, mate. Andy M says, the voice actress for May is pro-police, not pro-China. Protoman says, these companies shoving politics down our throats in the States while submitting and kneeling over like dogs in China is the poetic justice we needed. Joshua Thomas says, thoughts on the second whistleblower hiring Mark Zaid as counsel. Uh, best of luck to you. That is Mark Zaid's practice area. Practice area does not appear to be tortious interference and defamation in Texas. Um, and he appears to have done very little work for Mark Wade outside of trying to signal boost his uh, lawsuit. So we'll see how that goes. But uh, Godspeed. Hopefully he doesn't suck for you, I guess. Or hopefully he does suck if you like Trump. One of those two. I don't know. I don't particularly care. I'm more interested... Uh, let me let me talk about this. I'm not pro or anti-Trump on especially on the impeachment issue. I am very, very curious to watch whatever version of the impeachment issue we have roll forward. I'm very, very curious because there's so rarely uh, a glimpse into impeachment procedure for presidents, specifically for presidents, that it's interesting just to see what will happen. I don't know. Um do I do I think what Trump has done so far is impeachable? Not based on what I've seen. Uh, or I should say it's impeachable in the stretch that Congress gets to determine what is impeachable. So there you go. If I were in Congress, would I impeach Trump over what's happened? No. No. Uh, and, I, and I think that it's a fool's errand with a Republican Senate. Um, they would they would need, you know, some really egregious stuff to actually get a Republican Senate to uh, carry out the articles of impeachment. So, uh, but I'm, I'm really curious to see how the legal arguments play out because it will shape something that doesn't get shaped very often. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Austin Heartless says Diablo one and two are my favorite two games. I played hellfire for around seven hours this morning. Well, Diablo one hellfire you played for seven hours this morning. I can't even go back and play one and two because I hate how slow the walking is. And the endurance bar. I hated it in Diablo 2. Diablo 1, the walking is just so slow. I think all MMOs, all speed should be increased at least 20%. Nacho Ninja 6 says, is Tracer also straight in China? Uh, that's, I don't know. Mad Chris 2449 says, my grandfather's tombstone was just complete. And it has the scales of justice on it. Reminded a lot of you, Nick. My grandfather would have liked you a lot, I believe. Hey, thanks, man. Uh, hopefully he was a good man. And more importantly, hopefully you have great memories with him. Uh, that's, that's what really matters beyond anything else, is that you have great memories that you can always look back on. Heinrich Bernadovsky, Berndowski says, Oi, Boomer, will you ever update your podcast list? I did the other day. I uploaded like six or seven, and I will upload more Yes, it just it takes the hard part about it is it takes me sitting down at my computer for a couple hours at a time to do them because I have to convert the video file into audio and then I have to upload that audio, modify the descriptions and just it just requires me to be present at my computer, which I'm often on my phone and less often on my computer. 
Also, have you seen that video of Hong Kong protesters hanging a British Hong Kong flag in the local legislative assembly? P.S. Taiwan number one. Uh, I have not. I've not seen that video. The nerdiest geek says, will there be any more Ace Attorney anytime soon? Yes. I'm not sure when, but yes. Maybe even this week. Diver Warrior says, sacred ointment lubricates Sabbath's walkbacks. Venomine says, you seem to be short on wrenches. Can I has? Uh, I don't know. I don't. I, I'm intentionally short on wrenches. Um, I haven't decided. Uh, and I've had too much, too much vodka to make that determination. Um, I don't like having a bunch of mods in the chat. I really don't. Um, so, because I don't want over moderation. Does that make sense? I don't want over moderation in the streams. I only want um spam moderated i don't want dissenting opinions or dissenting comments or disparaging comments about me moderated really don't care about that uh people are free to to say things that they like and don't like um so i don't know uh can you can you message me personally so i can consider it uh with less vodka in my brain blink your eyes 1400 says it was probably very painful and i heard it on the other side of the track her falling, that is, it took her a few minutes to get up. Well, she doesn't get an F if she lived. Uh, Jason of the Great Awakening says, I see the Great Awakening is going to plan. And uh, looks like that's it, guys. Well, thank you for hanging out. It's almost 3 a.m. This is a four-hour stream. I didn't think it would be that long. I thought maybe we'd have two and a half hours. Uh, again, my appreciation to Mark for showing up and and hanging out. I always like when Mark is on. He's a great guest, well-spoken, spoken, smart guy, uh, very cool resume and very cool ideas. Check out Ember. It's in the description. Um, I'm going to check it out and see if I can support the development of it. Uh, and then hopefully, man, uh, I would love if they create a beta version of it, although they'll have to call it an alpha if I'm going to play it. Uh, if they create a beta version of it that's playable, um, we can do that on stream and really just enjoy that and chill the heck out of it. Uh, anyways, I'm not going to be on Twitch tonight because it's really late. Uh, I may be in my Discord to chat drunkenly for a little bit. If you're from my Discord and you want to hang out and chat, I'll probably do that after I go to the bathroom. But uh, it is late, so I'm going to I'm gonna turn in. Um, you guys have a good evening. I will see you. I won't see you, but hopefully you will see me tomorrow when I release a very, very important video update. And, uh, and please, like and share the streams, like and share the videos. YouTube is in this great thing. They're doing this very cool thing right now. I'll tell you guys, my, my most uh, persistent listeners. YouTube is doing this great thing where every single video I upload, and specifically when I upload the video, they burn subscribers off of the channel. So uh, I assume those subscribers are people who haven't watched a live stream in a long time or something like that. But uh, every video I upload right now, um, they burn subscribers off. I've seen numerous people complaining about it. So what helps counter that is liking the videos, sharing the videos, making sure your subscription is current. And uh, tomorrow I will need your help sharing and disseminating the video that comes out. Uh, I think I think a lot of people will want to see it. Uh, people who hate me and people who like me will also want to see that video. So uh, thank you guys for hanging out tonight. I will talk to you tomorrow. Let's get the whiskey drinking lawyer on. I forgot I could do this. I forgot I could do the outro song. So thanks for doing that. Also, if you like, if you want your free Hong Kong shirt, uh, it, it is out there on Teespring. Um, again, it's mostly there just to kind of laugh at the fact that we can make things like that exist within moments and uh, and hopefully screw over Blizzard. <laughs> but uh, but if you want that, the link uh, the link is well the Teespring link is in the description. You can go check it out. So, all right, guys, thanks for hanging out tonight. Have a good night. Peace. Peace. To the hills of Glen Livid, there's no one who explains the law better than Nick. So pour out a glass for the ones who have passed to make the law what we have now. Oh,
This lady is fair and she handles herself with the grace of one who has borne many children. As the wife of a lawman, she makes sure that he has the time and the place to provide for them there. So pour out an odd bag of Balmora the Frog. The spirits flow as the ones who get on your blood. So pour out a glass for the tea post on Twitter as we hear lost blaming tonight. From the white shores of Nam to the hills of Glen Levitt, there's no one who explains the thought better than Nick. So pour out a glass for the ones who have passed to make the law what we have now. Oh, the guests are all plenty, folks, from Dante to Drexel. They bring their perspective and spice to the mix. But the reason we're here and the one that we cheer is the one who is showcasing us his career. Pour out a glass for the ones who have passed to make the law.